All right, welcome back to Pantheon. And we join now the party which we left last week at a very tragic, silent scene. As at the end of last week's episode, the bridge that the party were planning to cross was barred by a single figure that announced that he was here to make do for a long, long, long overdue agreement with Yago, with Larkin, whose box perhaps belonged to this figure that blocked the way. And after an unfortunate disagreement, he took the box from fort by force from Paul Larkin. And Yarling, you stood there as you saw the person who you'd come to know over the past several years, the person who even seeing them upset was like a dagger to you, then have the life snuffed from them in a moment's note. If someone so full of life and joy instantly taken from you in the snap of a finger as she falls to the ground silently cleo hangs tight to your coattails looking down at the still corpse that now lies face down in the cobblestones and that's where we'll pick it up the figure of course gone having disappeared without any majestic signs of magic he was just there one moment and gone the next Antigonus cradles Larkin in his arms, reaches into his bag and grabs clay, rubs it across her back where all these fractured bones from the magic missile have hit her, and casts cure wounds, trying to heal as what he can. All right. You try and search around for all the places where it might have been hit by these magic missiles, but as you saw, they just seem to spread out in almost like spider legs type of pattern from this man, and then all arc inwards, hitting her at different patterns, one hit her one way, which make the one coming from the opposite side hit her even harder. You try and find all the places that it hit, but there's just too many. And from your hands, Antigonus, you may realize that this is a person for which it is too late. She needs a priest, one more powerful than I am. Quick, get her on the horse. Let's go back. And I sort of saddle up and try to have the body hoisted up to me. Uh, Herodotus will be helping up uh, Pruitt. Yeah, this is the first moment where Pruitt is coming to after he went down. And <clears throat> as soon as uh, he starts to get lifted up, his eyes flutter open. There's a scrambling moment where he's looking around for his bow and he's trying to pick it up off the ground, but it's not near him. He then draws his Gladys, gets up, marches down the bridge, and without stopping, just says, Where is he? Hmm. All you'll see on the more other side of the matters. bridge. Go ahead. There's more pressing matters right now. We must heal her. She needs a priest more powerful than I am. Follow us back to the city. He's gone. We got the body. grabs his bow and starts riding. to follow. Yeah. Herodotus is standing there, just sniffing around in the air, like trying to pick up some arcane residue. Uh, yelling okay. will uh, mount her horse, um, helping Cleo on, but pretty much riding directly behind um, Antigonus um, with, the, uh, with Larkin. Okay, so Antigonus with Larkin sort of slung across the back of your horse with um, Yarling in close, close behind you. Um, across the ridge, Prey, you don't see anyone except perhaps a few travellers which this scene have waylaid as they try and cross, but they see no way across. They only see you with a drawn Gladys, and that puts them on a bit of edge as they look at you and they sort of back off with steps. They're not sure who you're looking for, but it's not looking like someone they want to mess with, so... You, though, um, Herodotus, if you want to try and do that, I guess roll an Arcana check. Yes, please. 14, so that's a dirty 20. Yeah, um, as mentioned before, um, this man didn't leave any sort of signs of exceptional ma magical ability behind. It was as though he just didn't exist. He just disappeared. It's as though it felt like you blinked and he was gone. Oh, that is so strange. And I'll uh, turn around and and follow the group. As Got soon as them. I start passing people on the way back to town, I start screaming, Priest, we need a temple! Someone! Direct me to a temple! 
all right traveling so fast it's difficult to get a good intent good indication of where people are pointing but someone will hear you from far off and they'll cast their arm up towards the acropolis of town a small raised hillock in the center upon which you do indeed see the same pillars which sort of signify a temple some kind of statue ahead of it but from where you are it's difficult to tell who the statue is of i pick up the pace and just beeline it there as we're it. kind of rushing um I'd like to get Private's attention really quickly. Just say, Private, you you still are in pretty bad shape here. I'm, I'm going to give him the the healing potion. Um, yeah, he without breaking pace, he will take the healing potion, but in, he he won't use it. He's just pocketing it right now. Very well, um, Antigonus, as you make your way along the uh, the town people will start throwing themselves aside, trying to get out of the way of what they seem to be a galloping horse. Some guards even raise shields, but they don't get in your way. As they, um, as you're shouting for a priest, the temple, um, it becomes clear to them what the issue is as they see the body slumped over the back of your horse. It isn't long before you reach the steps that wind upwards around a significantly built marble acropolis until you are at the very edge of a large building, several columns, sort of lining the way to the entrance at the very end center. It's not as big as some of the temples you've come across, but it still seems to be the centerpiece as far as religion is concerned in this town. Steady the horse, hop off, take Larkin's body across my shoulder, uh, and take a second to look up to see if there's that idol. Do I know whose temple this is? Do I see the god? You see a statue of a man uh, with a full sort of curled beard. Uh, holding a large spear, more larger than you've seen before on most statues, perhaps, uh, with a, a hoplite helm balanced on the back of his head, standing with an immense pride about him. And you can roll me a low religion check if you want to. Low DC. 19. 19. You know this temple very well. One of the 12 Olympians, one of the most popular of them, the hot-headed and vicious in battle, god of war, Ares. This temple belongs to him. All right, I think about what that might mean to me as I sort of try to march forward up the steps and, and scream, Sanctuary! Sanctuary! We need healing! Yelling, yeah, this mountain and follow behind, um, holding clear really tightly. Sure. You'll find some people have sort of scattered up the steps behind you, um, looking for what the commotion is. This isn't something that usually goes on in the quiet city of Chalkis, but um, with the body slung over your shoulder and um, Cleo and Yaling following close behind, with a, twin, with a 19, sorry, you'll be fairly aware that the Followers of Ares tend to not be the most gifted people in the healing arts. They tend to favor more towards the enhancements of soldiers in battle and more the cherished moment that happens when a soldier draws his final breath. Um, as I pass someone on the stairs, maybe getting out of the way, I'll say, is this the only temple in the city? Um, the person will just look at you with a bit of trepidation. Um, your, not only your form, but the sort of bellowing of your voice at this moment and seriousness puts them on edge. And they'll back to a pillar and say, it's the only temple, sir, but there are shrines. There is shrines, but this is the only temple, yes. And just move fast, move fast, go on in. Yes, yes of course. And he'll move to the side. And inside, um, there's a roll of red carpet sort of what looks to be some side of burlap or linen that seems to have been finely stitched with gold engravings along the sides. Either side there are what seems to be statues of different people, but they're not done in the same sort of style that you would imagine of gods. These seem to be more human. They're smaller. They have different sort of armors on from places you may not be able to tell, but they line this, um, this carpet all the way up. Either side there are small rooms off to the side. At the very end there is a dais where the where the um, carpet goes up step by step to a large altar at the very end. Um, I'll just keep pushing forward and I'll say, no quarrel, no quarrel. We simply need a priest. A young girl has died. Please. Mm -hmm. Barging several people out the way, already queuing to see whoever's in charge here. Many of them give up their position, noting the emergence of the situation. Um, it's not long before you're at the dais yourself and you're greeted as a man turns round wearing what seems to be some sort of full red, blood red toga and a gold laurel that's placed on either of his ears. Please. I know the goddess Ares, Ares is not known for his forgiveness for his life giving, but she's just a girl. She was the wrong place at the wrong time. Please, if you have any healing powers, bring her back before it's too late. 
uh, the priest will look down solemnly. He'll wait an uncomfortable amount of seconds, assessing the situation in a pregnant moment of silence, which seems to linger as though everybody in the temple has caught their breath at this moment to hear what kind of judgment, what kind of power the priest can hold in this situation. He takes a step down from the dais slowly, once, twice, three times before his feet touch the same level as yours. And he kneels over the body. Is it still on your shoulder or? Yeah, I've, I've taken her off my shoulder and I cradle her head very gently and sort of hold her outward as far as my arms shaking, tired, mm -hmm. and holding her as firm as I can. He'll look down at him. Um, he'll sort of immediately notice the irregularities in the physique that is what is left of Larkin. Wherever these magical things hit her with this immense force damage, not only left this posthumous bruising, but whatever bones underneath seems cracked and frayed. So that, that sort of one arm is facing the wrong direction. One hit her neck, so her head sort of lolls to the side. It's not a so pretty sight to see. But he looks down and he inspects at all these wounds, and he looks up to you and says, How did it happen? A traveler, a man on a bridge, with whom evidently she had some history, we do not know, but he snatched her life from her in a moment of confusion. The rest of us, all we could do was flee. I don't think it was meant to be this way. I have to believe there's another option. Please, I'll get down on my knee. I am not a man who is pious. Not for this kind of situation, at least, but I beg you. You can roll a persuasion check on him, if you wish. It's not bad. 17 plus... Uh, 19 total. Hmm. He'll put a hand on your shoulder, Antigonus, and look over your shoulder to who he assumes you've come with. Yarling and, and Cleo, I assume, aren't far behind. They're, uh, like, right behind Antigonus. Hmm. And he'll say, If this has happened to your friend, then I would say it is no mistake. In the eyes of the gods, there are no mistakes. To say it happened in a moment of confusion, but what is war if not a large, large moment of confusion between two large empires? This, I'm afraid, is what the soldier lives for. To die in combat is no disgrace, my friend, and I'm sure that she holds a special place. It wasn't combat, it was slaughter. She's As no it's... soldier, she's a young girl. What if fate is this moment? What if fate is me bringing her to you now, asking for this resurrection? What if this is the moment that the gods want? You can make that decision, not a god. If I take her back now, from where she currently resides, that would be me directly interfering with the pattern of the gods. Yarling will unsheath a dagger from her thigh um, and hold it up to the man's throat if she can. Um, then I guess me slitting your throat here will be a part of the gods. Hmm. Something tells me, child, that you know this not to be the wisest decision. I think you know the same thing, so fix her. If it was in my power, I would still not fix her. And he'll take his, he'll pull his hand up slowly and he'll wrap it round your wrist in no aggressive manner and he'll begin to pull it away. Please, I am sorry for your loss, but slaughter is often the perception of those that did not win a combat. She was unarmed. She did nothing wrong. She gave her life to save Cleo and she'll like gesture. I understand. How many mothers and daughters, sons and brothers, do you think come to me every day? A soldier lost in war is a heartache you will never shed. Then why don't you help? I am helping. It may not seem it, I know. But I cannot bring her back. And I can only tell you that this is something you must learn to live with. The gods stay. They gift every one of us with the power to move on. <laughs> Tell me, if your friend had done the same to this man, would you so eagerly bring this man to me and ask us to bring him back? She wouldn't. 
Mm. You understand what I am. Attack unarmed people. We'd be monsters. War makes monsters. This isn't war. It is war, my friend. It is war on the smallest scale, but it is still a conflict. Who With do that, you will rise away and um, look to Yaling for a second and say, there are other shrines. We could try other places, but every minute that we lose is another chance lost. My friend, there is nobody. Take her to the horses. Sir, who do you love? Hmm. Part of me tells me that I would regret telling you this, but I love my wife. I love my children. And if you took her after some monster came in and killed her, and her body lay lifeless in front of you, and that man said that he would not help, what would you do? I would question my faith in the gods, but I would not bring them back. Yaling, she is dead. And with that, Pruitt will turn around from where he was positioned in the back and he'll make his way out of the temple. Um, anyone watching will see as he passes by one of the marble pillars, he punches it uh, very hard. Um, All right. His knuckles go bloody and he makes his way out of the temple and sits on the steps. Sure, take a point of bludgeoning damage. Herodotus at this point is mm -hmm. still like struggling to walk up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> finally made it. <laughs> Fair enough. But um, the priest will finally, as you start backing away, he'll put a hand very softly on your shoulder, yelling, and he'll say, it's not, it's not something I wish on anybody, but I, it is a war. And remember, although you have lost this battle, Ares will bless you in the future. For no greater fervor comes from loss. It is a war, make no mistake, but it is a war that is not over. And you have made a war between us. So be it. I've got friend. better things to do, but I will come back. And she'll so storm out with Cleo. And was dragging her behind. There are several um, of the townsfolk that are standing astride in twain of this carpet now, as um, Gal, I'm sorry, Larkin is sort of carried from the temple. You could hear a pin drop in this temple as the man looks out on uh, atop the dais now, having retreated back to the altar. He looks at a moment of quiet contemplation as you leave the temple. Outside, the sun still shines down. But with every passing moment, the truth begins to become more and more inset in you. That what you came to know as Larkin, your friend, your family, seems to have departed from the earth. All that's left behind is her mortal vessel. Antigonus will gently place her back on the horse. Um as kindly as he can, and he turns around and looks at the rest of the group, shakes his head. Fools. That's all we are. Believing in some hero's quest when we're only running a fool's errand for the gods. And when we finish and serve our purpose, where will we end up? Just like her? Just like the Pythia? Just like Karnak? There are no heroes in Elysium. Just shadows of those who thought they were heroes. And we are led here by the nose, by the gods, for the, the purpose of beings that could save it all with the snap of a finger. They could save the whole world. But Antigonus, without death, what is the value of your life? It's the balance that gives us meaning. What does value come for anything when it could just be free? Do the gods have value if they don't know death? If you want to be a hero in this world, you need to be born of a god. Heracles, son of Zeus. Achilles, son of Thetis. Romulus and Remus, Pruitt. Raised by fucking wolves. Sons of Mars. Who are we? Pawns, sacrificial lambs, fools. Yes, but 
It is them that envy us. Antigonus just shakes his head and looks for the nearest inn. Sure thing. Kind. I'm I'm sorry, my dear. She was a kind girl. She was. Difficult to fully appreciate the gravity of the situation. Many people part with wide birth from you as they see it playing out, but pretend not to hear as they make their way to and from the temple. However, Antigonus, as you depart to try and find somewhere that may qualify in your interpretation as an inn, you'll find several buildings that are half open to the elements, but seem to be serving some kind of swill. As you'll see people there um, copiously drinking from small cups of which you can only assume by its red tinge to be wine. It's in the center of town, in the opening that they call the Agora. Are there any waiters walking around with, like, you know, crev- uh, uh, chalices or anything that carries the wine? Mm. I'll say that there's serving girls that mill about certain places where people sit. Their responsibilities mainly in recovering cups that people may take away with them, help themselves to. Serving, though, maybe not. Well, if I see anything that's got liquor in it that seems available, Antigonus just grabs it and slams it down. If anyone looks at him, he'll he'll throw a silver their way, but he's drowning everything that's in his path. Sure thing. Approaching where the person who has this sort of um, large open vase of what may contain wine and dipping certain this sort of ladle-like tool into it and filling these cups looks up to you as you approach as he places one down on the counter. And is that the one you drink? Yeah, I take it with both hands and just go with it. As he looks at you um, with a sort of eye for people who are in need of a stiff drink, as soon as you put it down, he takes the ladle again, scoops it into the vase, and just pours it directly into the empty, um, smaller, sort of very wide brimmed cup that you just drained. Without a word, he fills it again. The normally talkative Pruitt uh, goes into the building as well, takes a seat a short distance. Um, maybe even gets past a cup, but he's not drinking and he's not talking. Herodotus will offer an arm to Yalin. Come on, my dear. Thank you. And she'll uh, she'll take his arm and uh, hold her clear really tightly and just kind of pull her along, trying to best to sort of shield Cleo's vision of Larkin. As best you try, though, Cleo does ask the inevitable question from the mouth of a babe so innocent that it's difficult to answer, but she does ask you, Larkin, a word that in any other situation may be so easy to answer, but in this situation hurts as much as a ninth level cast magic missile. Um, She says, is 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 Larkin coming? I Larkin can't come anymore. She's, uh... Larkin will rest here for now. But we will, um... We'll come back for her. Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> we'll I let Larkin rest, but we should probably go home. I mean, I think Mama is worried about us. So we should... She'd want to hear from you, too. She's questioned where you've been. We'll, um... We'll take you back. Um, have you, uh, had your medicine, Cleo? It's, um... From the letters, it sounds like it's, um... It's been a while. Oh, uh, that's the weirdest thing. That man... He did something, and I feel great. Look! And she'll pull where... Along her whole left arm, there used to be this sort of scale-like scarring. But it seems like just now the fleshy, completely perfect arm of a young girl. I can move it. I can do this. And I can do this. 
I could never do this before, but I can do it now, and I can do this. Watch this. And she'll pull each of her fingers back. All the stuff that the current, the, her old condition would not allow. Can I do a medicine check for what that condition could have been? Yeah, sure, absolutely. 11 on a dice, 14. Okay, um, it's not really a name for anything, so I'll call it um, Asclepius Lock. Just a riff one. Asclepius Lock is when somebody um, is born without full control over one of their arms or one of their limbs, uh, and moving it in any kind of way that might disturb the joints would cause exceptional pain. It's only cured by quite a rare medicine, and that, that medicine only cures it in the short term. A, um, a permanent cure is something that would have a I mean, what did you score, actually? Did you do a medicine Four, check? Yeah, 14, yeah. 14, right, yeah. I'd say um, with the 14, you know that n- no traditional medicine cures such a thing, and you probably surmise that it's some kind of magic. Arcane so. or divine? Mm, rather than arcane, check. 21. 21. Mm, that would be some arcane magic. Tignus finishes another full glass, feeling... What's your name, my dear? Yeah, it's, uh, it's Cleo. Oh, do you, do you like magic or tricks? And he'll start sort of like get a coin out and use Pristine Station to do some magical tricks just to try and take her focus off of Larkin. She just look at the magical tricks. I mean, roll me a performance check. God. <laughs> Yeah, because if you're trying to do it in a sort of way that's entertaining... Natural people. seven. Natural seven, sure. Explain to me how this goes wrong. <laughs> well, he makes it fly around her head and then accidentally, mm. it accidentally hits her eye. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's all right. She lets out a laugh at this as well. She just put a hand on her eye, but she just let out sort of... <laughs> wow, that, that's really something. Um, and as she takes her hand away, the coin will be there for her to keep. And she'll put her hand down. She'll have a drap me in her palm. And she'll look at it and she'll p- p- pass it back up to you. Oh, no, you keep it, my dear. Huh. That's an apology. She'll show it to you, yelling. Give a wink and she'll pocket it in one of her many, many pockets. You're learning. <laughs> mm-hmm. But okay, with that, Herodotus, um, down at the uh, the so, so, so-called so inn. I'll walk, yeah, I'll walk, uh, I'll walk Yarlin over to... Where are Antigonus is in that are. Sure. Um, Being like so, his third class, uh, Antigonus mm-hmm. slams a couple gold and starts to look around to see if where everyone else is. Preywood is there. He's within eyesight, <laughs> but he's not doing anything. He'll sort of stumble over and lean on the table for a moment, but not speak. Pulling a table aside is easy enough. If not, if they were already occupied, the very presence and the looks in your faces tell people that you may need it more than them. And as you sit down, you still have these um these cups of wine with you, but they won't be being refilled anymore, of course. The drachny you left is eagerly taken up by the man you can assume to be in charge. But you're soon joined by, I think, Herodotus. Yeah, I think he. I think he took us over there. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah took her over. Pulled out a chair for her. Mm-hmm. Without Shh. getting back to the gloomy stuff, like, could you want to explain to me what is going on with the um, Larkin? She's on the horse at the moment, is she? Is she being laid by someone or something? Because uh... Kara would have been with her, yeah. um, spending some time just using druid craft to make some flowers. Mm-hmm. and kind of weave them all together and sort of drape it over the horse with her. Okay, sure. And with Larkin alone occupying the horse, you can make a sort of wreath around it, which um, it looks very pleasant despite the situation that it's employed in. Contiguous sort of sloppily turns to Yaling when she walks up. Did she... Did you have any beliefs or ways in which you um, finding his words very slowly in which you said goodbye 
I'm sorry, I don't know what else to do. Um. We have, uh, we have never been favored by the gods. So, no faith. But I think she should be brought home. I'll, um... Family can say goodbye then. Yeah, I'll, um, find some embalming fluids and some wraps. I'll see if I can handle that. Just stay here for now. And with that, I'll stumble away mm -hmm. and start to uh, ask around for the um, corridor or whatever the equivalent would be. Okay, yeah, sure. You'll find somebody who specializes, perhaps some sort of minor acolyte of Hades or Thanatos or something which can effectively work with a dead person. Um, that's what you're looking for, but the investigation check will tell me how quickly you find that. Uh, investigation is nine. Nine, yeah. Um, don't really find anyone who specializes that in that immediately, but asking around, um, you'll say that somebody says that over the bridge, mainland Greece, there is somebody who does this for this town of Chalkis, um, but they're sort of on the outskirts, on the other side of the bridge. Okay. Herodotus is going through some parchments and scrolls trying to pull one out looking for maps uh, where did you say you were from my dear where was the i, I can't i honestly <laughs> my brain is gone it's Ar argos right <laughs> yeah argos yeah understand. it's uh um... oh i've heard of argos i'm trying to remember where it is and i'm trying to look on my map sure thing um being that you have a map History. of Greece and Argos being quite a significant city, it would inevitably be marked on the map. So there's no real check yeah. necessary to locate Argos on a map. No, you'll know where it is. Oh, look, it's one, two. Uh, Try to remember how far it would be to get there. Quite far, you know, at least um, several Weeks, days months. travel. Oh, no, days. no, Greece is not a huge, huge country. Um, you know, it's several, about a week, maybe. Yeah, five, five days to a week would be the what you'd roughly es estimate. I should have a euro for something like that. But yeah, four or five days you'd estimate to be there. I mean, it's it's really just as simple as asking, you know, um, somebody who's made the trip before. But, you know. Um, Prewitt will... Um, he's, he's, again, he's dead silent, lost in thought. He's tagging along with the group. Um, he won't go with Antigonus, but he'll, he'll hang around Herodotus and, and yelling. Um, upon hearing about uh, Argus, he'll break his silence and just say, We will need to go to Athens to get to Argus. Are you sure you do not want to bury her here? I don't know. It's not her anymore there's no dishonor in this we can bury her tonight and then go home your home Argus she should go home we uh, we don't it's not, you don't bury them here anyway you burn them and put a dragon over her eyes don't you Harry Sorry, there's me. Uh, yeah, that is the traditional means of disposing. But, who knows? However you wish. Um, Antigonus has not gone back to the group. He sort of found a, an alleyway or some kind of s private space, and he's just sitting on the ground. He um, pulls some clay from his pocket and just fiddles with it. Not really trying to make anything, but thinking. Sure thing. The day drags on as um, you guys spend time, I assume, reminiscing, planning. But um, being that it gets sort of the, st the sky starts to take on a very telling um, shade of color, which signifies that the sun is beginning to um, near dusk. As the sun is starting to set, um, 
Pruitt will turn to Yawling and say, I will wait outside the city and I will dig. If you wish to bury her, come outside. It is fine if you do not wish this. Kara, I would appreciate the company. And uh, Pruitt will make his way outside the city. Oh, we should probably bury her. With a drachny for the for the ferryman. When the lights Argus, dim, go ahead. I was just gonna say, Argus is not terribly far from here. We were planning on going to Athens anyway. If Yaling wants to take Larkin home, I think that's something we should do. Yep, Prewitt is already outside of earshot. You know, he's he's gonna dig regardless. Sure thing. Um, so Prewitt, um, making your way over the bridge, which already may cause some <laughs> pretty terrific memories, but you do find yourself on the other side, and the town sort of splays out into sort of outskirts, collections of small buildings that don't really resemble a town anymore, until the road bends into in, in towards mainland Greece and another one down the coast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you'll find us uh, several patches of land which obviously don't belong to anybody, or don't have a significant place in, you know, people's ownership. So you could try and start digging. But do you mind if I ask how? I think an explorer's pack comes with a small shovel. <laughs> yeah. If not, I mean, <laughs> just, just, just with your hands. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, do you want to have a check on that with me, and I'll head up back to the other party. Sure. So, sure. Um, so what is this for, like, uh, Palamedes, where are you? Palamedes, um, as though whenever he's called, he significantly appears, or I should say, uh, conveniently appears. He um, sort of flutters down and um, sort of scratches his large talons on the um, table that you're currently sitting at. The he looks at a child. Does she seem interested? Hmm? Sure. Uh, with, if Cleo is there with you, um, I'm assuming Yaling, you and Cleo are staying yeah. with him. Oh, you're staying with the arms, so clear whenever it'll be there. Yeah. Um, she does look at it with a bit of a uh, tilt of her head, then look to you and say, Did you do that? Oh, yes, it's my friend. Look, I'll poke his belly. He's a bit chubby. Sort of ruffles his feathers and sort of puffs himself up in a sort of abrasive way. And he gives you the slightest of pecks on your finger that you poke him with. Oh, he'd be, be, be nice. <laughs> chubby. Highly doubted. Oh, you Robust. are a bit chubby. It's not chubby. You should see me beneath my feathers. I am actually strike quite the figure amongst owls. Oh, I'm sure you do. Can you hear this one? Anyway, go go find the handsome, the handsome half orc. What's his name? His name is Antigonus. Oh, I'm glad you know. I pay very much attention, Herodotus. You should listen to me more. And with that, he'll sort of um, approach the edge of the table and let himself drop off it before his thing, his wings just flutter into like a manic, um, sort of disorganized pattern. But he does take off into the sky after some effort. Um, searching around for Antigonus. Mm -hmm. But with Antigonus being down an alley, I'd say it would be very difficult for him to find him soon. While, um, while Herodotus is distracting Cleo, um, Yarling will excuse herself and go see Larkin's body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. So Larkin is approached um, along with Kara, who is uh, pulling the horse along with seems to be turned into some kind of... Um, some kind of funeral wreath has been put around the horse, several different flowers, many of which you wouldn't recognize, um, not, late, not local to this um, sort of environment, sort of surround the horse and yet Larkin's body. Did you do this, Kara? I did. They are beautiful, thank you. The very least I could do. I don't recognize most of these flowers. <laughs> they come from my home, which is quite far from here. Larkin probably explored there. <laughs> she liked to travel. <laughs> yes, yeah, it was hard to keep her at home. <laughs> <laughs> is she the reason you came to Greece? She's the reason I do most things. <laughs> so silly she always likes to go places and do dangerous things that doesn't have to change you know 
she can still be the reason you do things. Just in a different way. I vowed to protect her. It should have been me. We never know what life has in store for us. But there's one thing that I do know, and that's that life is followed by death. It's followed by life. And the cycle continues. This won't be the end of Larkin's story. She's probably exploring where if she is now. Perhaps you can begin to explore. That's not really me. I, um, if I may, gotta have some alone time with Larkin. Absolutely. I think Rabbit wanted me outside anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Of course. I'll leave her and head out to sure. meet up with Prewit. As you're on your way to meet with Prewit, um, Herodotus, you're approached um, by a man you've come to be fairly familiar with right now, and in the current situation, being entirely tone deaf, is slapping a donkey on its rear, trying to get it to move quicker as it tugs along a cart. You'll see Aquilus, who's made it sort of caught up with you guys over the cost, you know few hours that things, finding you around town. He just sort of sits down across from you, Herodotus, and he says, Zeus is balls this town. Why are we still around? Why have we not gone on ahead? I thought we'd meet on the other side of the bridge. Why are we still here? What's going on? Oh, um... Larkin, she died. Uh, uh, which one was Larkin? The... She was like one of the girls. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, no, yeah, I, I remember, I remember. The, the quieter one, the one that didn't make all the clacky noises. Larkin was in rude health when I last saw her. What do you mean, dead? Oh, oh some wizard. Some wizard killed her. Okay, Herodotus, says, I'm going to need you to take a few steps backwards in this story and tell me what, what do you mean a wizard killed Larkin? He was, he was after the little box that she had. Hmm. Well, where is she? What happened? Where is, where is that girl she was traveling with? I'll point over. Now, look, she, you may just catch a glimpse of um, um, Yaling heading off to have some learn time, and also Kara moving off into the other side of the town. Uh, he'll also see the, um, you know, the body strewn across the top of the horse. Um, at which point they actually just sink in with him that it's not just Herodotus is rambling. It may actually be true this. So he pauses for a second and just leans back into one of the chairs he pulled up with you, and he says. That's true. That's 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 terrible. I. What what caused this? Some sort of argument, I, after the box you say, but. Oh, he he just wanted the box, and she refused. And. And then he killed her. And we'll look at the back of Yarling, and he'll shake his head and say. I can't imagine what she's feeling. I lost the oracle, but there's a difference between duty and family. She's heartbroken, the poor girl. Hmm. Well, our path takes us to Argos. Indeed. Mine to Delphi. We may separate sooner than I'd like, but in the meantime, I... I would like to help you on your way. Thank you. Okay. Miller sit there, contemplating quietly, looking down at the table ahead of him. I'll pour him a wine. Sure, which he readily accepts. But yeah, we'll cut to um, Kara going across the bridge. Um, Not difficult. Just uh -huh. Looking for private. <laughs> sure, yeah. As you get to the precipice where the bridge sort of has a small horizon all to itself, even from there you can see where Prewitz designated the place that he will begin digging. But Prewitz, did you manage to discover whether or not you have that 
I Ooh. don't have a shovel, would I just be able to use my passive investigation of 18 just to... I, I don't really care about the quality or the price. I just um, want to buy a shovel and start. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, um, it is farmland. So you, if not a shovel, there'll be some kind of farm implement that you can effectively use to uh, make not a not a proper grave, if there was such a thing in ancient Greece, but uh, right. maybe a more shallow grave, four feet or so down, whether or yeah. not it'll be tall enough. You know, you make it the best you can do. You're still digging. Sure. Yeah, I'll knock off a direct me for that. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, Sakaria, yeah, easy to find the very peculiar side of the um, the gnome digging himself effectively into the earth. I'll quietly approach, but not say anything. Just kind of wait for him to notice me. Yeah. Um, there's uh, there uh, an amount of time passes in which mm -hmm. Prey definitely would have noticed you, but he still isn't making eye contact. Um, it's about half an hour before he even says anything, and he's dug. A, f a fairly sized grave at this point and I'll just kind of put the shovel to the side still looking at the grave I'm tired of being a survivor you are a druid no? I am I need your help How can I help you? I chose to abandon my home. The way of life of my family, the druids, we respected them. We followed them. I knew one. She was very nice to me. I left for Rome. And I made a new family. And I lost that one too. I need roots. I need to regain what I lost. Will you help me? I'm not sure how, but I'll certainly try. Teach me what I knew when I was a child. That is what I need. What is it you want to learn? The way nature's course and how to be a part of it again. Nature's course is complicated. It's not simple and cut and dry. It's not all sunshine. I'm not expecting it to, to learn it in one night. But I would appreciate your help. Certainly. I would say the first thing to work on is surrender. Nature is a strong force. It does what it will. The storms and the seas, the green grass. It, the tides will turn whether we are here or not. We are just a small part. Work on letting go. Prewitt will, at a much gentler pace, continue digging. Mm -hmm. You're making good progress as you guys are talking. There's the, um, we'll say that, you know, um, the sun is just about hitting the horizon. So an orange hue takes over the sky. Each of you know that it won't be long before the sun sets altogether. Noticing the dark, Antigonus will flatten out the clay that he's been working with, cast light on it, as if it's like a little ball of green fire that he's holding, mm -hmm. and make his way back toward uh, toward the little pavilion where they were drinking, looking to see if they've, they're still there and made any progress. Mm -hmm. um, Herodotus, you hear a ping, even though it's been an hour or two, um, almost as though he may have forgotten that you asked in the first place. But um, the owl comes back to you and says, Oh, I, I see him. I see him now. Say who? What are you talking about, you stupid bird? Uh, Antig Antigonus, <laughs> you told me to keep an eye out. I see him. Oh, so I did. Where is he? He's, he's uh, 
I think he's walking up behind you. <laughs> it will not turn around. <laughs> and at that, I snuff out the flame with my hand. Oh, there you are, boy. Herodotus. You've seen many things in your life. Have you ever come across something like we've seen today? Pr probably. I'm afraid I can't remember much, boy. In some ways, I envy that. If I could forget today, I would. Has there been any decision made about where we're moving, where we're going? Uh, we're going to take her to Argos. I see. For her, to her family. Well, perhaps then we should stay the night here. The sun is setting. And take off in the morning. Is the child, as she fell asleep? Or is she still here? Or mm. She'll actually be like pretty buzzed with the idea of, you know, being out of a town that mm. she's probably never left before. So she will be, you know, um, sort of pulling on Yaling's skirts more often than not and asking questions that only a child can come up with. Such sort of things like, um, Yaling, what do you think's like the third best drink they have in this town? Yaling's with um, Larkin. I thought Clea was with Herodotus. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still like, quite close. Quite yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So, yeah, you did say you wanted to invite her to alone time with um, Larkin. So, yeah, we should, cut, we should cut to that, so sure. Um, given the time that you needed alone, I'll cut to you there, um, Yarling. And so there is a moment of peace that you can find with Yarling, with Larkin. I don't know what to do. <laughs> You've always been a stupid girl. <sighs> Cleo's okay though. I know that was probably why you did what you did. I don't know whether you want to go home or if you want to be buried somewhere else. I know you like to explore. I think it would be right for us to go home. At least the family can say goodbye. And maybe Someone better with words can explain to Cleo. Garrett did something very really nice for you. I should take your advice and just be nicer in person. I... I don't want to say goodbye. But I don't think anyone can help me now. I will do my best to avenge you in some way. I think I'd need to get a little bit more stronger before facing him again. I'd look a bit like an idiot when he's got all this power. Several people be making way for you as they immediately assume that this is somebody who maybe had too much to drink on straight across this horse. But noticing the flowers and um, your disposition towards it all there, Yarling, they immediately, well, after a few seconds, recognize that something much more tragic's happened. And um, they'll give you a wide berth despite you standing in quite a public area. I don't want to seem disrespectful to you. And I know it's a bit weird to do, but I guess you won't be needing it anymore. And she'll um, go to see if she's got anything on her personally, whether it be drag me or anything. Face your thing. 
as though there is one last honor that thieves can go through with each other. It's that every thief knows that when one thief dies, it's the on honor, the duty of the other thief to make sure that everything they had was made useful. And you will find uh, everywhere you almost look on um, Larkin, given the things you taught her, like always keep a knife in this place. And sure enough, according to your advice, you will find a knife in that place. You'll find a knife perhaps strapped around um, the back of one of her thighs and things. And uh, it's the same type of knife that you used, you'd use in that situation. And sure, she has certain, certain trinkets that you'd collected that she couldn't sell for much, but had sentimental value. So you can go ahead and take a necklace of um, forged trap me. Has it um, the thing Antigonus gave her? Uh, which thing is that, do you mean? It was the clay She model? put it in the box. The clay <sighs> minotaur, she put it in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. So, all these things that she did put in the box, which unfortunately included most of her stuff, um, was taken when the box was taken from her. So, But she does have her immediate things on her jewelry. She'll have a few drachmi. We'll say around 12 drachmi in her pockets. And beyond that, it's just knives and knives. Rodus will tell you to the child. Uh, what is your name, child? Cleo. Have you, uh, did you tell me that already? Um, f five times. Oh, you no, must, no, you no, must no, ig no. ignore this old man. Uh, he'll really offer boring. his hand. He said, Let, let's, let's go find your mother. <laughs> And she'll just look at you and roll her eyes. And then she'll just <laughs> yell yeah. across. Yelling! Can you come back? Cleo, do you fancy a piggyback ride? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not from you, Herodotus. The first time in hours, there's a slight smile on Antigonus's face. Cleo, let's go find her. And I hoist her up to my back and sort of take Cleo as a piggyback ride toward... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Toward yelling. No. Instantly sink two small hands into your full head of red hair and then yank back. Point, is... with, point with one hand, but yank with the other. Hey -ya! I'll make a I'll make a little nay and move <laughs> When he does that, uh, Herodotus will look to like Palamedes and the, Oh you can get stuffed. You're probably heavier than the girl. <laughs> and, and follow, follow after. Mm -hmm. Sure. He'll hover over you, but he will never land on you. He's made that mistake before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to say that you could probably quite easily locate where um, Yaling is, given by the horse alone that's sort of um, surrounded in flowers. It's not a difficult thing to find in the town. It was all, f um, all f Sorry, go ahead. Yaling. Um, my thought was that we would stay the night here in the city make way for Argus in the morning unless you had other plans for her body no that that sounds good I don't know many inns around here perhaps Aquilus would know he's been here before yeah it's a worth a try we need to find somewhere for Larkin as well can we shroud her in some cloth or some some coats. I, I don't know if many inns will let you just bring in a a body. I would say I had ideas, but I'd always do things like this with her. More important now than ever, I think. We will learn... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go on, go on. I say important to know if you're asking, if you're waiting for him to get us the pipe in there, he didn't actually follow you over. Still giving you guys space back at his table at the end. I'll walk up to the, um, whoever's running it and ask if there are any um, vacancies available. Mm. There's pillows you can use in the back if you need. I know you are in trouble, friend. I seen the look on your face. You have been here all afternoon. Please. You've been very, you've been very kind so far. I appreciate that. We would take respite here for the night. We'll get out of your hair in the morning and make sure you're paid well. And please bring your um, your friend, the one on the horse. Welcome to stay. Thank you. 
My word is very needed right now. You shall not be disturbed. I'll relate that back to them, and I'll walk over to Herodotus. Um, Pruitt and Kara, I haven't seen them in a bit. Could you send them a message? Um, uh, I can do, and I'll start getting the pen, uh, my quill, and... I meant more through your bird, or maybe magical means. Oh, I could... It looks to Palomides. I could, I could get him to take it to huh? him. Sure. Just let them know that we're staying at the end in the back. I'll let the barkeep know that they can come back here. We'll rest the night and make a decision for the travel in the morning. Okay, boy. Uh, yeah, I'll write a small scroll, give it to Palomides, and tell him, obviously, roughly where they went over the bridge. You muted. You muted, Harry. So, yeah, uh, wrapping up a small bit of papyrus and attaching it to Palamedes. Yeah, uh, flying over, being an owl, he will basically easily spot where um, Pruitt is busy um, perfecting this um, grave he's digging above him, standing Kara. And they'll swoop down, and um, he'll sort of scuff up the dirt as he lands until it settles around him. Indeed, what may have immediately been a threat, you recognize to be Palamedes, the owl belonging to Herodotus, in one talon, clutching a bit of papyrus, which, with alarming sort of almost human agency, it just lifts its talon and offers to you, to Kara. Well, hello there. You're Herodotus's friend, aren't you? I'll reach out and... Um take the scroll and give him a little scratch. Sure. He'll take the scratch and he will uh, immediately set off again, sort of causing up the same amount of dust as he flaps his wings and takes off from the dusty ground. I'll read the message. Pray what I, everyone is gathering at the inn. Looks like we're going to stay the night here and make way for Argus in the morning. I think you've done enough work here. Go to the inn. I will meet you in the morning. Are you sure? Yes. All right. You know where to find us. And she'll leave him. Sure thing. You know where the inn is at this point, so finding your way back isn't too difficult. Whether or not people have retired to this back room yet is up to them. As the night begins to pull on a bit. So. Well, I'd like to do something. Um, he will obviously we're sitting down and talking, and Yarlin will probably be, uh, or Cleo will be a little bit asleep or whatever they're doing. I don't know. Um, uh, Antigonus, uh, do you do you think that wizard managed to get the box? I don't know many people like that in my life, but I would assume he has some means that he could locate it. Oh, we we could, we could go and have a look. If you fancy a stroll? I'd be happy to check out what you'd like. We need to gather the horses and get all the supplies ready anyway. Sure. Yeah, we'll do so what as, we, as we... Yeah. yeah. Take all the horses, try to get them somehow uh, tethered up to some poles. Uh, Larkin's body will rest in the back very kindly on some pillows. Mm-hmm. And I'll let Yaling know that Herodotus and I have just a quick thing to do, and we'll be back soon. Sure. So what's going on with you, Yaling, at this moment? Um, after Antigonus probably told Yaling that she could bring uh, Larkin indoors, um, would probably like the pillows that you, she would probably sleep on would probably go for Larkin, mm -hmm. lay her out. Um, she'd bring the flowers that Kara made like a wreath of and um try and lay her to look at more in like a peaceful sleeping position if possible um uh cover her face in uh, a cloth or some fabric mm -hmm. or anything to hand um uh probably looking at depending how late it is probably looking after cleo just kind of maybe like braiding her hair or something keeping her like trying to keep her relaxed so she falls asleep mm -hmm. um but yarling probably wouldn't she wouldn't be sleeping she'd just be trying to focus on getting cleo off to sleep 
yeah Cleo is just a barrel of questions though and uh, most of them are her beginning to clock on with this, what is going on with Larkin she just looks over and says she's really sleepy huh <laughs> I never slept that much during the day I know that Larkin not <laughs> sorry Cleo I'm just so used to explaining things to her um Larkin isn't asleep, but she is at rest. She's. She'll lean in as though the word itself is a taboo to someone of young of her age. She's dead. At the moment. Oh. I. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um. Yeah. Um, she like really tightly hold Cleo's hand and almost, almost looks kind of insane in her eyes. Just, mm -hmm. but we will find a way. Yeah. Okay. Sure. We'll we'll find a way. And she'll um, it's sort of dragging her gaze from yours and just looking at the clothed form of what is Larkin. I, I'm gonna go to sleep now. I'm gonna go sleep over there. And she points to the far side of the room. That's all right, Cleo. Okay. And, um, I know this was more of her for forte, but um, if you uh, if you need to talk to anyone, I am here. I'll be okay. I'll be fine. And she'll just sort of slink off, but keep her eye on this sort of slumped image of Larkin in the corner of the room opposite her. She pulls a pillow tight to her chest, back slumped against the wall herself, sort of peeking from behind it. But after a few minutes, you'll begin hearing the sort of settled breathing of her finally paying for the amount of excitement she'd had today with a sound, deep slumber. Raditus, what did you have in mind? Oh, what did you know if we could get down there? I take we're, we're walking. I want to, I obviously, we went over the bridge. Is, is there any way for us to get down there? From what you remember being thrown off the bridge, yeah, you go and take a look over the bridge, and it is just jagged rock all the way down towards what looks to be a quite shallow sort of rock pooly area at the bottom. But there doesn't seem to be any path that sort of runs parallel to the cliffs that get down there. I would imagine that since Kara was headed from the bridge back, she would have bumped into Herodotus and Antigonus on their way to the bridge. And that's definitely something that could happen, yeah. And uh, as you approach the bridge, Kara, is Prey with you as well? Or? Uh, no, I left him. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you do bump into um, both um, Herodotus and Antigonus, who I assume are looking over the edge down at this um, colossal drop, yeah. down like where the statue's feet are hidden beneath the surface of the ocean. What are you looking for? Oh, I was just wondering where that box might have went. Didn't he say it was at the bottom of the ocean or water? The, oh, yes. Whatever this well, is. We don't know if he actually got it. I thought he said he couldn't get it. I don't remember. He said that he had some fishing to do. Ah, oh. so perhaps he couldn't get it right away. Perhaps. I don't know. I don't have any... Ways of locating things, perhaps Prometheus. Oh, I do. At some I, point, but... I do. But not from here. I would have to get right down there. When he starts standing on the edge, <laughs> I grab him by the by the waist. Look, Herodotus. I know that you can get down there safely. The question is how we could get back up. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> I'm looking around to see if there's any way down there. I mean, it's 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 almost not completely, um, you know, vertical cliff face, but a, that ascent would require an extreme knowledge of how to uh, navigate mountainous terrain. What about and, getting back up? Is there no like staircases, like stairs further down? The only thing you can see, <clears throat> perhaps, is the very, very, very old um, route that the builders of the statue perhaps took in the first place. But even that, at this point, is in complete disrepair and is eroded into the cliffside from from high tide. It would take a um, very careful footing. 
Okay. Considering what we've lost today, I'm not sure it's worth the risk. A man like that probably has all the abilities in the world to find a magic object, to make it rise from the ocean itself and make him pancakes in the morning, for all I know. Oh, pancakes? I've not had them in a while. I all step back down. Oh, very well. I was very interested in the magical item. Yes, well, it seems like a lot of people are. That may be the problem. We'll cross paths with it again if we're meant to. The gods have strange ways of twisting our fate, it seems. It might be safer for now to let it lie and see what happens. I agree. I think right now all we need is a, a sleep. Fruit was with you, Kara? He was. He's not inclined to come back to the end just yet but he knows where we are hmm. while they're all um sorry just while they're all out and uh it's just Cleo larkin and uh yarling in the basement once Cleo's asleep yarling would probably just spend her time probably sobbing <laughs> mm -hmm. but she'd be listening out because the moment anyone comes in it's just gonna be like okay i'm fine <laughs> sure um, safe in the knowledge that Cleo is asleep, you can pretty much assume that nobody is hearing you at the moment. But yeah, um, I'll ask you then, um, Herodotus, Antigonus, and Kara, do you make your way back to the inn? Yeah. <clears throat> sure. You'll pass, Antig uh, you'll pass Aquilus on the way, who's still outside nursing some wine down. He just gives you a nod, but doesn't approach or even rise from his chair. As he sits beside aside a small cart, which nobody else knows except you, is currently holding his own very special cargo that he needs to transport to his own very special place. Mm -hmm. I know we're delayed. In the morning we ride. We have to go through Athens to get to Argus safely, from what I understand. There's even another pit stop on the way that may help us. Are you saying this to Aquilus? Yes, sorry. Okay, sure, no problem. Um, he'll just perk up, looking you in the eye and say... We can ride, but with this cart, we're not going to get very quickly where we need to go. I hope you can make pace for me. If not, I would understand. Sure. Well, we have some cargo that we're taking of our own, so seems like everyone may be moving slower than we anticipated. Perhaps it would befit us in the morning to send messages to Athens to let them know about the army. Hard to think about in this circumstance, but... That letter may reach them before we do. When was the last time you were in Athens? Oh, at least a year ago, maybe. Maybe a little less. Mm. I didn't necessarily leave on good terms. I can't imagine the person who would receive such news with sincerity. But we will try. If you deem it fit. It's all we, it's all we can do. Hmm. I'll stay here for the night. I'd rather not have any surprises. It sure. seems you all need some rest. I think um, we do. Harry, just for reference, where mm. is Delphi in relation to Argus, Athens, where it's we like, are? Um, I mean, you. Do, um, I want to answer you, Cara, but I'm not sure you'd know. Um. But I can tell you that... Um... I've traveled a long way, Harry. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I forgot you traveled a long way. <laughs> um, yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm going to say that you can piece together for surmise from what um, Aquas has been saying over the past few days that um, the point where you'd have to split from each other will come sooner rather than later. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Very well. Um, pray with uh, Pruitt's going to uh, sleep on uh, – after a certain point of digging and thinking, he's going to sit down, shovel in the ground, hand on a shovel, and fall asleep in that position, meet up with everybody else in the morning. In the grave? Yeah. Okay, sure Well, thing. next yeah. to it, yeah. Next to it, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, so you see, you, you sleep under the stars, and um, being the time – but this is said, the stars are in abundance. You see a huge collection of Hypnos's blanket that has covered the sky. It's always a pleasant sight to see. Um, but yeah, 
given your exertion from digging this um this grave it doesn't take long for you to just uh, close your eyes and fall into a long deep slumber as well um before antigonus goes to sleep i'll cast lesser restoration on larkin's body just to try to get rid of any smell or any kind of there is a very particular spell that does that and it is not a rest lesser restoration unfortunately ah okay well mm-hmm. worth a try yeah sure so you do try indeed um but <laughs> there is not a smell yet so whether or not it works you aren't really sure and if there is a smell then it is thankfully covered by the um copious amounts of uh, perfumed and floral roses and all sorts of different strange plant life that um car was kind enough to shroud the fallen in yeah So, uh, you guys, I assume, made it into this back room, and you would have maybe heard them coming. In fact, roll me a perception check. Um, going. Do we? Okay. Okay, so that's an 18 on the dice. Um, plus. Da, 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 da. So that is 20. Now, dirty 20. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, sure enough, you hear over the sound of your own gentle weeping, the sound of heavy footsteps beginning to come closer and closer to the room that you occupy until the door itself just slowly opens, giving you enough time, as you mentioned, to stifle your tears. <clears throat> She'll um, almost pretend to be asleep, kind of, mm-hmm. like against the wall. Sure. And with the slight disturbance, Cleo will rock in her sleep and change position. She'll just lie down now, um, but in a certain way that people do where they don't quite wake up. I'll put a finger to my lips, try to cast my spell, make sure Herodotus is comfortable, and then uh, curl up against the wall and let sleep take me. Very well. Herodotus, is there anything you'd like to be doing? No, because Pruitt's not here. So he'll go sleep. Fair enough. All right. So the night passes and you can hear outside people sort of you're very close to the sort of where the action is. Um, Macalus will sit outside nursing his wine, watching people come and go from the Agora. Being that the night is still quite young, but he gets pleasantly stupid on wine over the evening. Um, but that's all you hear is people jovially laughing outside um, in stark contrast to your own moods, it seems. But um, it's not long. Well, it's not long in your perception. Everyone having a rough day that um, you wake the next morning. And the um, sort of the chill that had filled the air overnight is permanent in the room. Not permanent, but pertinent in the room that you occupy right now. But through the creaks in the door and in the atmosphere alone, you can tell that it is some probably daylight outside. Probably um, around late morning. Um, as soon as Antigonus wakes up, he... Uh... Mm-hmm. Pulls out some little bit bits of parchment and he writes um, three separate letters, two of them to basically talking about what happened at Eritrea and the city being fallen, the undead army. And then one brief little letter that just says, um, we regret to inform you that Larkin has met her um, demise in the city of Chalkus. And I leave a lot of blank space um, mm-hmm. that someone else could fill in the details. Okay. When Yaling's awake, I'll give her the letter and say, um, this letter, it's up to you to send it, but it may beat us to uh, Argus. The the post system is rather quick. I don't know if you want them to discover this by mail or not, but I thought I'd get it started for you. I'd say the hard part. You can fill in what you want. Thank you. And with that, and I just leave and go find Aquilus. As you're going out the door, Antigonus, um, right next to the doorway uh, is Prewit. He's just kind of head down. Under uh, under any other circumstance, you'd think he'd fallen asleep drunk there, but uh, he's, he's waiting for you. You made your way back then? Yes. Are we going? I believe so. We have some letters to send, and then we'll be on our way. And with that, Prey will continue to accompany you uh, where you're going. So I'll seek out Aquilus and show him the two letters. Yeah, Aquilus will be in the exact same chair he was the night previous. But slumbering in the early morning sun. 
I give him a little nudge to wake him up. Oh, God. I raise his balls. What a night kid. Oh, apologies. It's all right. We all had a tough night, and um, I'm not good with words, but I did write down the events of Eritrea on two letters. One I thought we should send to Athens, another we thought we could send to Delphi. Quickest way would be to use the shrine. Right. I don't know to whom to address them, though. I'm not aware of the uh, bureaucracy or perhaps anyone in the military that you trust. Just someone that maybe others will listen to and that would listen to you. You don't mind sending these. Well, I could send it to Ares. The only contact I have there is the Stratagos on Eros. Uh, sure. Man of a military man, but you wanted me to send the others to Argos? I'm not sure to who I would address such a message. No, I, I one to Athens and one to Delphi, I thought. Ah, very well, there's plenty of people I can send it to in Delphi, yes. Sure. Um, we're just going to pack up the cart and get things ready to go if you want to send those letters for us. Yes, I believe I have some of my own letters as well. And they'll take that um, parchment from you, and um, he'll nod to you and take an answer and knock to the cart and says, if you don't mind to look after this for a while, I should be back presently. Sure, of course. I'll, um, I'll type up what I'm going to write in the letter and send it to you, Harry. Okay, sure. Absolutely. Um, but he has that letter effectively uh and he will yeah like brett actually has that letter he will take it to the shrine of hermes but you know you don't see him for a good few hours but okay or just will walk out and see pro oh there you are boy uh, oh give me your sword oh yes the the pearl it is uh for a magic spell to find out what the sword is no oh what, what pearl? oh yes that pearl yes yes you still have it right of course it's not okay, it costs a fair amount. Okay, um, give you my Gladius. Uh, yeah, and he's probably will give him the, yeah, the new Gladius. Horatus will spend 10 minutes doing the ritual for identify. All right, fair enough. Absolutely. Um, it's, not a, it's not too long before it becomes clear what this is. Um, the sharpness and the way that this blade seems to have been so perfectly matched that you can feel sort of a magical energy come from it. And um, it is a short sword plus one. Oh, I always wanted a Vorpal sword. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> During that oh, ritual. Oh, it's rubber. Antigone <laughs> <Yes. laughs> has rallied the horses, has gotten them fed, and places five gold on the uh, the counter of the inn. If the guy's there, I'll give it to him, or otherwise I'll leave a show. Yeah. There is nobody there at the moment, but um, yeah. good to know. Yeah. Kara would have been helping Antigone with the horses and the animal stuff. Mm hmm. Sure. You are minus one horse, of course, because of Larkin's own. Uh, but that is tied up now with Larkin um, sort of in the back. So, yeah, absolutely. I'll say um, to then Yaling, what would you like to be doing? Um, Yaling would most likely be seeing to, as long as Larkin's sorted, she'd be seeing to making sure Cleo got some sort of breakfast or food. Um, if she had any more questions, answering them the best she can. Yeah, sure. And she will ask you questions as you go along, as you look for some food. She'll just say things like, just innocuous kid things. What do horses have for breakfast, yelling? Horses, uh, they, um, they like to eat, uh, the, uh, you know, the green stuff that comes from the ground. I forget it, uh, grass. <coughs> grass. And, um... <laughs> It's they, grass yelling. Grass, sorry. Yeah. I'm so used to cobblestone floors. You um, are not very smart, yelling. If you don't know what grass is. You're right, Cleo. You're very smart. Mm hmm So yeah, grass. So they eat grass, but it is dried and it's called hay. Hay? Yes, hay. It can be quite confusing. Can I eat hay? I wouldn't recommend it. I had to a couple of times when things got tough, but you're more than welcome to try. I think I will, yeah. Let's oh, keep well, you eye can't out. do that. You need horsey teeth. Ha ha ha. And then she'll just keep on with these, you know, almost sort of ethereally weird questions that she likes to come up with. But 
Sean, yeah. Um, what's going on with Larkin? Well, she's up, taking a stretch, walking around. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, I believe Antigonus and I would have taken her and gotten her situated. Sure. Um, ready for the road on one of the horses. And mm -hmm. I would have brought the wreath of flowers and laid it over her again. Sure. Um, Aquila shall return within the hour, uh, having the scrolls no longer with him, from what you can see. Um but he will resume his position, sort of standing alongside the mule that's tugging his small cart. Um, you look to each of you, um, sort of, I suppose, getting ready. I mean, is anyone particularly not getting ready? No, is anyone doing No, anything? no, no, ready. Eating breakfast. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, it is sort of mid-afternoon, and the town of Chalkis is already alive. But at this point, most of the people in town probably have laid eyes on you once, and they know that, you know, these people are somewhat serious and not too mess with them, especially given the actions at your temple yesterday. But yeah, you're given a clear path out of town. No one really interrupts you. Um, and it's a bit of difficulty getting this across the bridge, but you can tell that the bridge is designed to allow carts across. And it does indeed just give enough way for um, Aquilus to get his cart across. And so you're on the other side of the bridge where Prewood and Kara know that this place is sort of spreads out to variously dotted around little sort of um, collections of small buildings, which you assume to be people's homesteads, farms, ranches, that type of thing. But the roads are stretch, um, both to the east and down along the coast. But there, as you get um, closer to where the road forks, you'll see um, four people standing on the side of the road of very different shapes and sizes that don't seem too usual around here. You've never seen people like this, particularly in Chalkis, before so far. But um, as you get closer to this fork in the road, the um, one of them will sort of, well, he's got a sort of mask across his face and a hood pulled far up over his head, not particularly the type of clothing you'd want for this weather, stands in the road and puts his arms sort of stretched across and waves you down. So I'd like to see who's at the front of this um, this sort of marching contingent, this sort of um, convoy that you guys have got going of horses and wagon. Yarling would probably be behind Larkin, wherever that is in the in the order. Sure. Larkin's going to be like alongside the cart, but yeah, sorry, Antigonus, go ahead. Antigonus would be up front, yeah. Okay, uh, and with that, as you get close to Antigonus, make me a perception check. Is this guy? I mean, do you stop? Is the first question. Eight. Okay, sure. And eight. Do you stop when in the road as he sort of stands in the sort of fashion of somebody who will not move, um, using his body purposely as a barrier to slow you guys down? I slow down a bit and I look over back to Pruitt, um, just behind me. Any thoughts here? Do we stop or push forward? Uh, describe the situation again. What's... Sean, there's um, how many? Five people standing at the side of the road. Um, one of them has stood up from, uh, well, one of them has sort of approached the middle of the road or this dusty trail that's going eastward into inland, into mainland Greece. Um, he throws his arms wide and he starts beckoning the others to come forward as well. And indeed, they come into the road um, and he's trying to sort of flag you down. But this guy's dressed in sort of um, dark materials with sort of a mask across his face and a hood pulled up over his head. Um, Prewitt will um, uh, kind of put back his cape so that is, the hilt of his gladi gladius is visible mm -hmm. and ride on just a little bit ahead of the group and uh, saying to Antigonus, uh, let us be careful, and then just riding on ahead, you know, intimidating if need be. Sure thing. Yeah, um, galloping ahead of the party at a sort of heavy canter. Um, it's not long before you are upon him and he almost backs off a bit. So you're playing a game of sort of chicken where as you're running towards him with this horse, you can see in his eyes, considers dodging aside, he's starting to move a little, but um, do you stop or do you just- Yeah, what, yes, I stop. What business do you have standing in the road? Oh, my friends, I don't want to be alarming to you. I just want to know where you are going today in this fine, is... lovely weather. That is not your concern. Oh, but friend, it is my most pressing concern. My compatriots here and I, we seek passage into mainland Greece. But the road, I've heard it is very dangerous. Can I tell by his accent and appearance where he's from? I make a perception check. Oof. Uh, no. 
Um, <laughs> nine. <laughs> nine. Um, nine. He's very sort of um, got a very sort of very strong accent and stuff. But uh, a nine is probably good enough to immediately paint this accent, which you know to be sort of an Egyptian sort of accent, and uh, confirming that it's a very low DC roll. This, I guess, uh, you'll see. Sure. Yeah. Now from behind, I've been there before, so yeah, you know exactly. Yeah. So all these things combined, you'll see behind the. Um, what little of his skin shows, it's got swarmed with um, scales, as though a man heavily on the Yontai persuasion mm. of things. But amongst the others, you'll just see two human women, a half orc, um, and a man, human man. Again, kind of, you know, throwing back his cape a little bit so that the Roman insignia is visible. Mm -hmm. uh, Privet will say, and hopefully the rest of the group is catching up by now, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Tigger um, especially is trailed not that far behind you, but is yeah, motioned good. the group <laughs> behind him to, to mm -hmm. slow. Yeah. And then Prewit will say to this man, what are you doing so far from home? Hmm. I came to go to the gathering of heroes, but I did not make it in time. Now my inclination is to go to Athens, see if I can make something of myself there. I am not with these people, but they share in me a destination. We all wish I'll... to go to Athens. Inside check. Yeah, I want to know if this guy's a freaking spy. I've so. got a passive insight of 15, so... <laughs> yeah, that's that's okay. Smell I mean... bullshit from a mile away. <laughs> that's it. Well, no, it's okay. You can't <laughs> smell bullshit from a 15. It's not like the best <laughs> in the world. Okay, um, roll me an insight. Whoever was, whoever's close enough to him specifically, please. Nine. Oh, fudge. A nine, yeah. <laughs> a nine kind of is correlating to how far away you still are, Herodotus. You can't really get a good read on him. Um, but go ahead. Uh, what... so well, that, that's okay, easy. because I rolled a four. My, a four. my insight was 20. 20, <laughs> okay. Um, to you, I mean, to... Um, to Pruitt and to Herodotus, it's just very hard to tell behind this mask. But um, to you, Herodotus, uh, sorry, to you, Antigonus, it's <laughs> even still hard because he's like um, not showing much. But from what you can tell, it sounds like sincere words coming out of his mouth just from the words he's chosen. Can't see the facial you he's using or the um, can't see how his eyes move very well behind this mask. But he sounds sincere. You have no idea how blessed you are, friend. Had you made it to the festival, you might not be coming back at all. What do you mean? Eritrea has fallen. An army of the undead attacked on the day of the festival. Well, that is troubling news for, for everybody. Indeed it is. Uh, I would like to know if he's actually surprised. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't seem to quite grasp it, as many people don't when you see an undead army attack the festival in Eritrea's fall. Right, but he's not just faking surprise, is what I'm saying. Uh, you can roll another insight check if you want to keep trying. Yeah, so, sorry to keep spamming. Yeah, that's okay. I'm you can curious. <laughs> oh, but this is much better, though. This is a seven. Sure. Um, <laughs> the intricacies of Yontai physiology, that when they express emotions, is different from human. Yeah. Um, so you can't tell if he's surprised or not when he hears them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When they're lying, they shed the skins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. Like constant loads of skin just behind yeah. him. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, Herodotus is too busy telling uh, Cleo stories. And he'll say to you as he um, looks across you, he says, I don't ask you much, but if you make your way across this path to the east, it is the quickest way to Athens. If you take us with you, we can offer much drachmi for the passage. It has been a long sa time since I've been to Egypt, my friend. I would be curious to know how is the conflict going between Set and the other gods? Ah, I do not pay attention to such things, my friend. Oh, such things must be trivial to an Egyptian. Mm. We all choose sides in the conflict. And what side are you on? I would rather not say, my friend. Worshippers of Set, and he'll begin to realize that he has misstepped already, but <laughs> are not so welcome in Greece. <laughs> hmm. Antigonus, I do not know if I have told you about the worship of Set in Greece. It is an interesting story. 
I'd love to hear it. Perhaps our friends can tag along and let us know along the way. Uh, yeah, and um, sure enough, many of the others will start approaching. And you'll see in Sickness Amelia, there is a half orc among them, a large half orc, perhaps rivaling even your own size. But um, he's dressed in very simple clothing. He's not a soldier from the looks of it, just a large half orc. Uh, beyond him is a woman who's got a bow slung across her back um, and another human woman who's in a simple toga. He's only got her belongings and a pack by her side. And with them also is um, another man, uh, just a simple man who looks haggard and older than the rest, but not quite as old as Herodotus, though. Yarling would probably trot up at this point. What's the holdup? These people are asking us for help passing into Athens. And he'll immediately turn to Yontai here to speak to, um, to you, or um, the equivalent of Yontai in this universe, to you as you ride up, Yarling, and he'll say, A sister! I have much struck me to buy passage to Athens, but your friends, they seem suspicious of... Suspicious is a hard word to say in Snake. <laughs> uh, suspicious of me, but you, I can pay you 50 drachmi now, a hundred when we reach Athens. Responding in speak and uh, snake language, mm -hmm. um, and what do you want from Athens? Mm, a no home, a safe home. And do you think you'll be safe in Athens? I am very good at hiding myself. Athens is a big place full of big people. Many people will not see me as I slink in the shadows. Sounds like you and I have a lot in common. Hmm. But how would we trust you on our journey? Please, look at who I travel with. This woman, she is in a toga. This man, he has no weapons. I have no weapons. I only have my drachmi. Is this still in snake language? Yeah, they're, they're just hissing oh, okay. at each other. All you, all, all you hear is... <laughs> and um, how would you say we take you to Athens? We don't have enough horses. We can travel alongside you. Only as far as this road goes. I have heard this road is quick to Athens, but it is quite dangerous. Many people... They say, disappear along this road. We don't want to make the journey alone. Well, then maybe we shouldn't take the shortcut. It is many days you were safe, my friend. This isn't just an ordinary exhibition. If you're looking to steal and rob, you've come to the wrong people. Ah, what a shame, because I was so looking forward to pouring the drachmi from your dead corpse. And he'll just, like, <laughs> smirk behind his thing. Bit of old Yontai off-color humor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you know. Corpse. That was a joke. Corpse is a very sensitive <laughs> subject at the moment. I see. Regardless... We each have 50 drachmi ready to give, and we each have a hundred drachmi more ready to give. Prove it. By all means. And then he'll um, reach into his own pack and pull out sort of a hefty sack, which throwing on the floor with your good appreciation of how much gold is in sacks, which um, is part of your living, you'd estimate it to be about 50 pieces in there, yeah, sure. I wanted the 100 to see if the 100 was there. <laughs> <laughs> say the hundred is here please look at this and he'll pull around another sort of um kind of a satchel that's attached below his actual full pack and that too jingles with coin she'll uh outstand her uh, outstretch her hand to hold it to weigh it oh please i don't want to be robbed on the road is the reason for me looking for protection i can give you this 50 drag me now if you give me your word do you really think I'd rob you right now? I cannot see a reason why not. You have several people looking very intimidating in army in armor, and I have this this orc who is not armed. This lady here, she is not armed. I, my friend, I am not armed. You are welcome to travel with us, but when 
going our route. Very well. And he'll turn to the others and he'll start talking in um, normal again, which is news to you guys as well in the party. We have reached an agreement. My friend here, my new friend, she has promised us protection on the way to Athens. My friend, which way did you want to go? Inland or through the coast? Um, Yarling will just, uh, sir, we said you may travel with us, not offer our protection. I meant no offense, my friend. I don't know which way you want us to go. Pray with Antigonus. Which way are we going? The way that I know cuts through the mountains. It goes right past a colony that I am familiar with. The coastal route, I don't know. I've been to the coast, I've been to the docks to take the boats, but I don't know the route to the coast. I arrived uh, via the coast. I came from Athens, so that's the route I'm familiar with, but it doesn't matter very much which way we go. I will leave that up to the guys. But you are welcome to travel alongside us. But I will be taking that victory track me right now. Of course. Please take it all. My friends, we have found our guides. Please offer your track me as I will. Please regard. And um, he'll take his large, well, his sack of 50 track me and he'll just sort of wing it over his shoulder at you in a sort of way that he expects you to catch it. Can I catch it? <laughs> um, roll me a dex roll. Oh, gosh. <laughs> roll, me a slide, roll me a slide of hand. It, it hits you straight in the face. Yeah, I just want to know because these <laughs> actions can happen to adventurers as well. It goes so. over your head and hits Herodotus. Okay, that's another eight natural 18, so then plus okay. slide of hand, so... <laughs> it's probably enough to say you catch a sack of gold. Yes, yeah, so immediately, <laughs> like, you just grip your hand around it and pull it back to you, yeah. Well, um, with no context uh, for his next statement, Brewitt will kind of put his ho horse a little closer, look over to this group they've just taken on, and just say, as a you and the ones told me, keep your enemies close. I see. Antigonus, uh, let's go through this mountain route. If you have friends there, it is better for us. They could break apart the trip a little bit more, but I don't know the safety of it. I've never traveled through that route before. I went straight to the coast, to the docks, on my way to Eritrea. I, unless Harry, I would know. I don't know if I, I'm guessing that I know the, uh, the, quickest the route place, north. Yeah, the quickest place to go to where you're describing would be to go through the um, the shortcut path that they mentioned inland. The coastal path leads more along the coast, and it takes a longer time to get to Athens that way. But um, rest assured, both roads lead to Athens. Yeah. <laughs> but all roads sure lead to Rome. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I will say, that. from what I can tell, the shorter route would go through the mountains, yes. Uh, carry on? Let, let us carry on. <clears throat> Very well, yeah. Um, unless anyone else wants to be willing to do anything on the journey, the road is quite simple. And despite the rumors they'd said about danger, you spot very little sign of anything that even someone could use as an ambush point. And it's not long before you actually leave the dusty sort of Hellenic mountainous region of the coast behind and you're into a more sort of grass, healthy looking verdant forest that um, upon each side of you... Um, sort of white barked birch trees and ash trees begin to appear in more abundancy as you make your way further inland you're traveling for around a good you know several hours and i'm talking until we're reaching effectively the point of next dusk unless there's anything you guys want to be doing on the road as um well, mm -hmm. so privates uh just uh, he's looking at these guys the whole time he is very suspicious of them okay. uh, do they seem like their gaze is off in the distance lost in the traveling or do they seem like they're looking us over or anyone specifically well they actually seem to be caught up in their own conversations especially the snake man the yaunty who is the more yeah. talkative of the bunch he's more probing people for information he will ask you questions along the way especially mm -hmm. to um yarling and um sort of, you know, talking about like, so, yeah, Link, uh, please tell me, what has brought you to Greece? I, I came seeking fortune, but I was late for the festival, so I must find my fortune in Athens. Well, your good thing you missed the uh, festival. Yes, so I've heard. What a tragic heard? occurrence. Well, your friend told me that there was some kind of attack. 
Oh, I see. Well, yes, the uh, festival went south fairly quickly. I, uh, mm. I'm merely going home. What does this mean to go south? The festival it moved? Have I missed a different place for the festival? <laughs> That's a Herodotus answer. Yeah. Sorry, time. I've gotten more used to uh, <laughs> speaking the uh, Greek tongue. You speak in tongues, yes. I understand this now. For you speak to your friends in this accent, and you are very good at speaking Greek. Me, I am not so powerful in the Greek <laughs> tongue yet. Yarling will almost just kick her horse to trot. And he'll like jog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's going to jog along and try and keep up pace with you to continue the conversation. <laughs> and Yarling, tell me, what do you think of the Greek food? They don't eat the living like we do in Egypt. I would kill for a good mouse, but then they insist on putting it to a fire. Have you seen such things? <laughs> I have seen such things, but you've got to know that... I am not one of the wealthiest in Greece, so I uh, have been living more by the Egyptian customs of mice. Ah, that is good to hear. And hey, you are a bit wealthier now than you were yesterday. Yes. You have someone to track me from me and my friends. That is true. It will go to my family. Oh, I am glad to hear this. Family is very important. And um, he'll just start talking about, like, amongst the other people as well um people who are traveling along with you are subject to his probing questions he reminds you a bit of cleo in the sense that he's just a curious state guy <laughs> on the road but yeah okay a yarling will so, ask him um why he's no longer in egypt if he's because if he's struggling to speak greek then that means he can't have been here for long mm. yeah very astute um so he responds and says well in Egypt, you are aware of the situation between the followers of Cleopatra and the followers of Set, yes? I've heard things. It's been a long time since I've been to Egypt. Well, I felt that things were getting a little too, how you say, tense between the two trains of, trains of thought. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give myself a pass on this one. Train some, <laughs> but yes, I thought better to go to Greece, where it is known, where people are more peaceful, more thinking with their heads, not with their swords. What are these trains you speak of? Of the no. thoughts. I, <laughs> thank you, yelling. Try <laughs> <laughs> shots fired, shots fired. You know what I mean. To train your thoughts like you train your strength. This is what I mean. You can train your thoughts. Oh, yes. You just have to sit down and think very hard. And soon you will think harder than you have ever thought before. You might want to get to that again. <laughs> right. It'll keep going on uh, about, for like this. So about, mm -hmm. I'm taking a about 30 minutes before dusk, when I start to notice the, the sun starting to fall and maybe mm -hmm. campsite coming clear um antigonus will very quickly about face his horse and turn back to look at the rest of the party being on the lead yeah and look very very squarely at all the people that they brought along at the last minute here the new guests and he'll say okay. all right we have camp to make here very soon so this is the point at which if you're going to attack us and try to take all of our things you might as well try we won't be letting our guard down tonight in any kind of way uh, whatever yes. deed you have let's face it square on or let's go to bed peacefully. Which shall it be? This is the state man pipes up again, uh, being sort of the sort of the face of this little group that you've uh, so kindly decided to escort. He says, "It's time, men. Now, ready your weapons." And um, he, he just looks back, <laughs> looks looks back to them, and they all look confused. And then he like reaches under for a knife of his own thing, and he pulls out just his blank hand and goes, "Ah, <laughs> my friend, we are as peaceful as we seem." <laughs> Then we will uh, keep watch. If you are indeed as peaceful as you seem. Yarling will lean into Antigonus and just be like, I kind of wanted them to attack us so I could eat him. <laughs> we'll let us sleep a little easier at least. I have some aggression I'd like to get out myself. And I sort of say that to where they can hear it. But <laughs> um, I'll pop off my horse and start to look for some sort of uh, clearing off the road a little bit. 
Yeah, sure. Um, cover. They're around. There's mostly forested area, but you will find a clearing that almost attaches to the road itself. So well within view of people passing by, but also quite protected in the sense that you're not in the middle of a forest. Um, there's that. Or you could go deeper into the forest if you wish. But seeing that you've take, taken a look at it back at everybody, um, the two women that came along sort of talking amongst themselves, one with a bow, one a bit shorter than the other. Um, but they seem to be just be talking very quietly amongst themselves. The old man, sort of in the blue, sort of, um, I don't know a word for it, like a toga that's got, you know, two arm pieces, but not a thing across the chest. But um, he's there, and he's just sort of pottering along in a sort of Herodotus-like way, uh, minding his own business, not talking to anybody. The half-fork war walks like stern, full upright, and like absolutely non-bending. It's like extremely peculiarly... Like ex- he's like posture. Yeah, pretty much. Like, he's like... He's adding an extra like three inches to his height purely from his posture alone. This guy walks with a pretty commanding gait. But um, beyond that, they all seem just pretty average people. But yeah, easy enough to set up camp and hitch your horses to trees. It depends where you want to go to make this camp. I think just off the road is fine with me unless anyone else wants to argue. We're camped. All right. I right. <laughs> <laughs> right. use sacred flame to light some twigs and give us a little bit of heat and fire. Ooh, that radiant fire. Gotta love it. Yeah. Radiant <laughs> fire. <laughs> oh, no. If everyone's on roll 20, you get a little bit tiny little map. Yeah. <laughs> Why could there possibly be a map here? <laughs> hey, sometimes I will throw maps in to make you expect a battle, but they will not be there. Same reason I ask for perception checks when there's something times there's nothing to see. <laughs> right. No problem there. Don't we? Don't think that just because it's a map. I'm gonna... oh, right. Fair enough. I, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, sure. But yeah, it's easy enough, and the sun is going down. It's becoming quite dark in the forest, so you do it is you do have time to find this and build this fire uh, alongside the road, around which like everybody sits who's accompanied you so far. By the way, just so you know, yelling, this is Cleo, next to you. Cool. Okay, cool. cool. Everyone else here, um, the two women, and obviously this guy's the snake guy. It's the orc and the guy, the sailor here, just so I can introduce everybody and stuff. Yeah. Um, the snake guy sits by the fire and warms his uh, hands over it uh, as though he's more welcome to it than everybody else. But uh, he'll be the first to say, very surprisingly, given how talkative he's been. He's like not stopped talking the whole journey, by the way. Like, even though he's not talking to you, if even if you're like 30, 40 yards away from him, you can still just hear like, and then I said, no chance. And I drew my sword, but it was too late for he was up on me. But I was faster than he. But he's continuously telling his stories, maybe not to you, but to someone. But, um, He's the one who uh, sets up his sort of seating area first and warms his hand on the fire. Um, and he looks to all the party members who've been escorting him so far, and he says, um, I have paid for escort, but I paid the handsome 50 drachmi. I think this also incorporates some entertainment, yes? We have a campfire. I suggest maybe we can share stories now. I do so like telling stories, and I see each one of if you want entertainment, I'd rather perform than hear another story. Oh, if you I have to... been uh, beginning to try to practice knife throwing, I was uh, wondering if I could practice here with you. <laughs> you want to throw a knife at me, yes? Yes, stand next to that tree. Oh, by all means, I look forward to trying it. And sure enough, he will go and stand <laughs> oh, no. against the trunk of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, please yes, try you. and don't hit me. I, my friend, I trust you are very skilled, but please try your best. <laughs> oh, I didn't expect boy. that. Um, <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, this could be a little bit of fun. <laughs> and every, everyone's watching expectantly as he just sort of puts his arms uh, wide and stands back, and he even closes his eyes for a second. I am ready to mix it. He says I'll it, put my hand on uh, Pruitt's shoulder and, and cast Guidance. Prometheus, <laughs> guide your blade, friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prewitt, you know, is surprised. There's uh, there's a bit of a standoff between him and this guy. And uh, <laughs> with Prewitt holding him, uh, his dagger above his hand. And then finally Prewitt just does a corner of a smile. Throws the knife into the ground in front of him. And we can bury the hilt. My friend, you missed me by quite some distance. Would you like me to get closer? Well, I expected so much, but now I see you can't even throw a knife more than five yards away from yourself. Hmm. 
I would be happy to use a bow if it is uh, your wish. It is okay, my friend. I don't want to kill myself too quickly. This new Greece area is so interesting, and I don't want to die before I can explore it fully. Hmm. Antigonus that... will uh, walk over to the half orc. Okay, the half orc sort of stands uh, still completely up straight. He doesn't even turn to face you, but his eyes move. You can see the pupils look across as you get closer. Do you follow a tribe, friend? Or are you raised with more of the civilian sort? He'll pause, a long pause, before he look, looks over to you and he bears a big toothsome grin and says, On my own out here. Hmm. On your own your whole life too, or just recently? Just recently. I'd love to hear that story if we're sharing such things. I will be back soon, but... We need to hunt for food. You with the bow. And he'll play, look to the woman instead of you, Pruitt. And say, hmm. Can you use that to find some food? I can help. I can help very well. And then um, she'll say, sure, and that these two will depart to go hunting, unless anyone wants to go with them. Basically, to go and find some food. I will go with. Hmm. Very well. Bring your bow. Might need it. But okay, yeah. Um, heading off into the forest, pray with these two. Um, the orc seems to be leading the way deeper into the forests. Yep. Um, and he'll turn to you, Prayot, and say, You're quite small, aren't you? Yes, and quite fast. <laughs> I bet you are. I bet you are. Right. We should corner off a perimeter to hunt with. Prewit. Your name is Prewit, yes? <laughs> yes. Uh, my name tag must have been show. Oh, did you not introduce I yourself? You, I said your name. No, no, no. I said oh, you, you did? Name. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> These things That's can be one. hard to keep track of, but no problem. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm, okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. You'll just say, you work your way around to the right. When you meet past the vista over there. We'll meet you around to the left. Hopefully you'll send something our way, or we'll send something yours. Okay, pray with, we'll go to the right, but his intention is to one-shot something and not have it go to them. Okay, sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you're ready in action, effectively, to try and hit yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, yeah, he splits off to the left. Um, it's not long for you guys to lose sight of each other, but he, the mystery points is quite obvious. Um, and um, it's about, you know, 15 minutes before... Um, you work all the way around, and they sent nothing your way, it seems. But um, you do see a deer, in fact. That seems to be, I mean, not a deer, but a goat, actually. Upon closer inspection, it seems to be a goat that's wandered a bit too far in the mountainous region. It seems to be just munching on some grass, not noticing your presence. My name is Prewit Romain. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to die. <laughs> yeah, just the goat hears this and immediately bolts off. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, no. He's, he's going to take a... He's going to take a shot without making any noise. Try uh -huh. and one-shot this thing. It's been a bit of ambience on for this night music, right? I've got some forest ambience. Courtesy, <laughs> as I said, should have said earlier, of, of course, tabletop roleplay, uh, tabletop music thing, whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, which always helps us out for cool ambience. Let me put this one on, see if this works. Um, there we go. That's pretty cool, right? So is that okay for everybody? <laughs> it's beautiful. All right, good. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah, so um, go ahead and roll an attack then, if you are knocking your arrow in, in the attention of hitting. Am I hidden? Can I make it with advantage? Yeah, I'd say so, definitely. It's fair enough. Yeah, okay. I'm glad I asked for advantage because one of them was a net one. The <laughs> other is... And that one would have hit them <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> 23 to hit. 23, yeah. Immediately hit. There's no need to roll damage on a goat, though, because I think your minimum damage alone would just kill it. Um effectively yeah it pierces the goat on the side and it does hop along for a few uh, more steps but it's not long and you can tell this before it just um crumples over and falls uh hearing the wolf uh, no, ignore the ambient <laughs> we'll go and secure the meat <laughs> okay fucking hell this wolf right um <laughs> there is a wolf out there somewhere but judging from the sound of it it's not 
yeah, you go and get it. And it's indeed just a very simple go, quite small, in fact. But it's a healthy prize, and it would definitely see you through for the next morning and plenty enough to go around. Um, but by this time, you can imagine that the other two would have made it around to meet you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they, he's, uh, is there anywhere to climb, get a good view, see where they are? Yeah, they said to meet on the other side of the Vista. You could get on the Vista itself. Uh, we'll get on the Vista itself. Okay, sure. Um, with that, um, you don't see the orc down there anymore, just the woman. And she looks up at you, seeing you immediately stand up on the Vista, uh, sort of at a, sort of about 10-foot cliff edge above her, looking down at her. She just points off to the forest and says, he said he saw something, to, and he died off. I mean... I, I've lost, I lost track of him. I, 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 I was coming around this way as we agreed, but he ran pretty quick. Um, insight. <laughs> okay, yeah, in, insight check. Sure, Sorry, go ahead. I keep spamming these. No, bits. that's all right. I mean, it's a, it's a valid. valid that's what they're there for. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, good. I got a six. Okay, sure. It's a six. Yeah, okay. Throw yeah. away your dice. She seems, some to be, she seems to be being I, sincere. I keep rolling the pink one. I need to roll the other one. I'm sorry. Keep, keep going. She keeps being sincere. Yeah, she, she seems to be she's been, see, uh, sincere. Um, okay. She does indeed, though, at, one, at the last minute, just offer your hand saying, could you help me up so I can take a look too? I throw her down the goat. <laughs> oh, right. Wow. Say, yeah. <laughs> say... Go back to camp with the food. I will search for your friend. All right, fair enough. Uh, and she does start dragging the goat back to camp. Yeah, and I will search for her friend at a stealthy pace. <clears throat> okay, sure. Oh, at, um, actually, I don't know if it's too late. What is your friend's name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Corskus. Corskus, okay. Uh huh. He's an orc, if you didn't realize. Half orc. Yes, um, we have one too. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Her. That's very interesting. Not too common, but um, yeah, call him by his name. He's a bit strange, but you should be able to find him. Um, I'll take this back to camp. Look in that direction, and she'll point sort of generally to where she came from in the first place. And is that where he ran off? As far as I could tell, if he's gone in the same direction, he'd ran off in, in the first place. But be careful. There's predators out here. Uh, one more time, his name? A Corsicus. Corsicus. Uh-huh. Okay. And yeah, I'll head off in that direction. Yeah, and she'll start disappearing, um, you know, into the, far, into the forest, in the direction of the camp, dragging this goat behind. But, um, Prewit, yeah. uh, make a perception check. After, like, about ten minutes of searching around, just make me uh, both a survival and a perception check. Okay. You're saying I get to use my survival skill, which I just got upgraded because of the All level right. up? Fair Yay. enough. Yeah. That's a 14 <laughs> for survival. Okay, and the perception? And for perception. 14 would probably be enough. He's a big orc. He's got big footsteps. You can sure. sort of find where he was going, but they sort of disappear at some point. Uh, seven on perception. Or no, f- uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, nine on perception. Sure thing. All right. Well, what you don't hear is the heavy footsteps coming up behind you then. As you sort of make your way along the forest, you're looking out for something with such intensity in the shrubbery and the footsteps uh, you're looking for where they may have gone. They seem to spread out a bit as though there was more than one at some point. Maybe he doubled back, but um, you do, in fact, get surprised by a heavy hand on your shoulder. But it's green and it looks like Corsica, so you can even sort of sense his presence behind you just before he places a hand on your shoulder. Um, but as you turn around and look up at him, We'll have a break here. I think. Oh. Welcome back to Pantheon. Hope you had time to go to the loo during the break because we all did and we're ready to get back going. Um, what's going on now is with the camp very warmly sort of um, standing out against the dark night on this road from um, from Chalcis to Athens along the in through the forest and over the mountain path. Um, you're all sort of sitting around and, you know, maybe talking with one another. Um, but the most important thing is that after the about around an, about 45 minutes or so after this hunting party had left, um, Pruitt returns. Yeah, so Pruitt comes back into camp. He has a goat with him um, and he's, he's kind of holding his head. OK, Never mind. like he's like anyway, um, just kind of nestling his head. 
Um, no, nobody that that left with him is there, and he just kind of throws the the goat into the middle and kind of sits down and just again just seems like he, uh, something happened. But <clears throat> oh, my friends, you've been so successful. But uh, without saying much more, the snake just pulls the goat to one side and begins preparing it. Uh, Pruitt will then go up to uh, Yaling and just kind of whisper to her, "I need to talk to you." I don't know how long, how much I can actually whisper on the microphone. But yeah. <laughs> um, I I need to talk to you. All right. About, and and he'll say about, and he'll like motion with his eyes to the other UNT. All right. Um, I go to the loo. You follow. That's a bit creepy, actually. Uh, it's it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I can't think of a distraction right now. You do that. Uh, and Prue will go sit back down. Cleo, go look. Uh, go play with her auditors. I'm just gonna go to the to the loo. All right. Immediately, Cleo will just run up and yank on her auditors' beard, like swinging <laughs> like a like, like, like trying to use this way. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not Palamedes. That's what he usually does. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yanks you down and begins leading you around the campfire slowly, not quite tugging you, but giving you a tug every time you slow down, <laughs> which is probably quite often. <laughs> yeah, and then after a bit with no explanation, Pruitt will get up and follow. Uh, uh, uh yelling. And, and, yeah. Antigonus will notice this and run up to Pruitt, put his hand on his shoulder. Three left, one came back. What's going on? I'll explain in a bit. Keep an eye on, and he'll again motion with his eyes back to the other UNT. Friends, you're missing out on all the good. I'm about to burn it like they do in Greece, and I will try it, but I prefer it raw. I'm saving this bit for me, and he'll just take out a raw bit of flesh and put it to one side. Um, I'll say a quick prayer to, uh, to Prometheus and walk over to him and pretend like I'm helping him open up the goat a bit, but I'll say uh, you've been a little bit mysterious with us about your business here. You say you were going to the festival, and then you say that you've been here a while, and then you haven't been here a while, and I don't know, something got to your head? Friend, you must let go of the suspicions you have of me. I am only here to explore Greece now that I have missed my chance at the festival. I Which way did you come from the festival? Which way did you go? I came from the south, along the and coast. Yet and yet you're at the northern gate. Why not take a boat? Ah, my friend, I don't do too well on the ocean. It was already very brave of me to travel from Egypt by an ocean. I prefer to walk when I have the chance. Ah, of course, of course. Antigonus looks very pleased with this answer. He'll, uh... Take a huft of goat hair and skew it off, and then walk over to Kara. <laughs> Ready your weapon. What? Just careful, just in case. Keep it ready. All right. Pray it's good there over here. So yeah, in the, in the meantime, oh, we got the map. That's right. Hold on. Yeah. Gotta look um. Mm -hmm. In the meantime. Yeah, so Prewitt is going to make his way over to uh, Larkin. Or, sorry, oh no, um, Yelling. Yeah. He's going to make his way over to Yelling. Uh, okay. Yikes. And is she doing anything particular, just waiting? Just letting up against the tree, probably just like fiddling with her dagger or something. She's been waiting a little bit. Okay. Uh, Prewitt will approach um, Yelling. And then just his eyes go wide and he says, What's that? What's that? <laughs> Whack! <laughs> All right, sure. <laughs> and um, <laughs> let's roll initiative. Which, oh my god, what's going on? What's that? <laughs> and then you hit her. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> All right, so. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Taking over from Pro it here for a second. Mm hmm. So yeah, Proit does approach you and he says, what's well, that at the back and turning around? But um, as he does, what you don't notice is that 
when you look around, which I assume you do, or do you just stare at him? She'd look around, like, what's that? She'd look. All right, sure. Um, at this point, as you look off into the forest behind you, there's something growing. And soon enough, this person who was about up to your waist is now up to your height level, even though it still seems to be pro it, but like a human pro it that's grown sort of large and gangly. But suddenly his arms extend further down to the ends of his knees, these huge one at first and then the other, as though bits of his body are changing one by one. It's difficult to really get a <laughs> sense on what is going on with him, but his body almost takes on this rubbery, sort of soft jelly-like substance to it. This sort of cricks his neck back and around until one of his eyes just pops wider than the other. A huge eye and a small one. But then the other one soon follows it, and it huge red things as a huge twosome grin starts spreading across its face as it slams down a hand across, way over, sort of slinging it round as though it's attached to him by jelly. But the end of it is in a hard fist. It's no longer Pruitt that stands before you, but it is an amorphous black blob that is taken on an almost anthropomorphic shape but not one you would ascribe to any living thing. This thing is <laughs> terrifying. The, the moment he wings round. Change, she's going to scream. Oh, you can try, but unfortunately, he got the surprise attack on you. And the thing is, when a <laughs> doppelganger gets a surprise attack, <sighs> it gets an extra 3d6. So I assume an 18 hits. It's a 19, actually, because he strikes with advantage because he's an yeah, ambusher. I'm, yeah, I mean, yeah. So he does six plus... Did you... Plus 3d6. I'm going to die, lads. Uh, 16 damage. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, how's that rolled for you? Are you okay? I mean, I've got 2 HP. I'm ah, interesting. Okay. Then it all I'm comes sorry. down to you. <laughs> it all comes down to I'm going to need you to roll initiative now. on um, that's, that's his surprise attack. Now he rolls initiative. Died from a... bitch slap. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I got a 19 on initiative. Oh. You have access to roll 20, so you know that that's not good news for you. Oh, I have, I am, I'm clicked, I'm looking at D, oh no. <laughs> no problem, because I will, I will inform you, much to my sort of secretive DM desires, the, uh, the doppelganger has rolled a 21 on initiative, adding him to the turn order first. And he will, again, before you have time to strike out or scream, he'll immediately swing around his other attack to sort of whack around another sort of long elastic arm, but with a heavy, heavy fist at the end, sort of swinging it around in sort of a horrible whip flash pattern to you. Um, and he will strike out again with a slam. And he's got multi-attack, by the way. But did it attend us as a 10 hit? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. All right, sure. Um, but he's going multi-attack, so we'll see how his other one does. A 16. That hits. Oh. All right. A 16. I'm, I'm sorry, Panda. Eight bludgeoning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm down. Yeah, doppelganger is nasty when they get surprised, right? Um, okay, so combat pretty much went <laughs> as expected there. Um, fair enough, fair enough, yeah. But, um, it's not been a good day for Yarling. Yarling, <laughs> uh -huh. it's difficult to react so quickly because the first hit takes you so off balance that he has time to hit you again, and you, got, you do draw breath to scream. But it's on the exhale that it catches you again. Another heavy hit knocking you hard on the head, sort of clacking with your jaw so you can feel it your jaw sort of swinging to the side of your face but suddenly it just goes dark but it is non-lethal damage <laughs> music's gone has it back to the ambience music's now. gone yeah I, have been I mean combat's over so yeah, have you got have you still got, <laughs> got, you still got think, ambience and stuff yeah I'm say, I thought you cool. planned it uh, yeah I did as someone said something there um, okay no problem um Okay, fair enough. Well, as this is going on at camp, um, some of them have only been gone for about, you know, five minutes or so. Um, but the state guy will still be sort of continuously complaining that everybody else is a Philistine for not eating things raw. <laughs> uh, but he'll be passing around bits of cooked meat to everybody, even those of you who are looking a bit tense at the moment. He'll approach you, Antigonus, with a bit of cooked goat, which is cooked in the very loosest sense. Like, he's not gutted it. He's just got a handful of goat from beneath the fur and put it on the fire. So Biddy, which handing you a black piece of meat and he just feeds it to you as though feeding a dog, like putting it to your lips, like, here you go, try it. I prefer my meat well done. Ah, this is very good. It is well done. Do you mind cooking it a little more for me? It of course. Like 
Of course, I am new to this. I will try a bit more. And he'll just go over and he'll just like instantly go over to the fire and just go straight with the straight into the flames where he watches it with quite close intensity. Cleo is still leading around Herodotus and stuff, though. Um, but yeah. Um, Antigonus will be curious where they went. He's looking over to see if he can see anything from where Pruitt and uh, Yaling left. Here's where we get to the meta game portion of today. <laughs> So, looking to the position where you saw Yaling and um, Pruitt left, they, it, they're gone for about 15 or so minutes by this point. Like, it's the time's dragging on a bit that they just had to go and have a chat. But, um, yeah, you can't see any sight of them. So often long for a bathroom break, don't you think, Kara? Uh, is is that where they went? The restroom? I d- I don't she know. I wasn't. She was going really to the loo. Paying attention. Um, I I think he's burning the goat. I'm gonna walk over and to the snake man and be like, hey hey, let let me help you with that. Okay. Well, while this is going on, we'll cut to pray it. Pray it. <laughs> Yeah. You awaken in a very dimly lit room, or what you initially think to be a room. Somewhere, somehow, you've lost consciousness, and um, we'll say at this point that what happened between you is a tumble between you and the doppelganger, the same way between um, between Yarling and the doppelganger just a moment ago, but much earlier in the night. And um, unfortunately, he got the better of you, and he did do uh, non-lethal damage to you to knock you out. That's just to fill in people of what we missed, of course hidden beneath the DM screen. Um, but yeah, you awaken and you seem to be looking straight up. You can see the, this sort of cave is dimly lit with a soft, fiery glow. Um, to the left of you, you'll see in a cage the girl that was with the orc originally when they went to hunt. But her eyes are transfixed on something that occupies this cave above all else. They're strewn around in several piles of drachmy, of clothes, of bones, of a small tent that's been erected in a cave, but you aren't sure where you are. But the girl is transfixed on what seems to be a large statue of two people standing side by side, holding hands. But, I mean, she could start seem to pull her eyes from it. Milky white, she's staring up at the statue. So what would you like to do? I would like to get a good look at this statue. Am I in a cage? I guess I you should ask. Sure yeah, thing. I figured. You are in a cage next to her. Alongside, you see several different cages, but it's just her and you in these cages right now, and she just seems to be transfixed by this. As you look up to the statue, you'll see one of a man and one of a woman. Both seem to be quite young, um, and both seem to have the very similar hairstyle. It's only from the very delicate features you can tell that one is supposed to be a man and the other a woman. They even seem to be wearing very similar sort of togas. And they each stand hand in hand, and I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, boy. Can't tell if that's cocked or not, um, but I'll take it. Oh, boy. Uh, ten. Ten. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> that won't do it. As you look up to the statue, the faces, they seem to both turn down in unison and look back at you as though they have a life. But something about it in your mind tells you it can't be true. And in actual fact, it's right because the faces, they just seem to meld away. And there is just a chilling... Um, emptiness of a face as though the stone hasn't yet been carved on these statues but then another face forms and then another one and it's though you're looking at something out of space it's just not quite transient in mind it's sort of not clicking with any sort of logical reasoning you can give to it but there's just so much going on there's it seems to be like shapes you've never seen before colors you've never seen before beginning to meld around these faces and you just seem to can't pull your eyes away from them as they stare back down at you okay um Still looking at it, I'm gonna yeah. kind of pad myself down. Uh, do I have my equipment? Unfortunately, you are transfixed at this moment. Right? No, 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 I'm still looking at it. Can I <laughs> do a Transf- body check? <laughs> I mean, you can try, but having failed your sure. wisdom throw, effectively, you are it's like in a hypnotic pattern for a, a, a scene. Sure. Is this gonna last for a certain amount of time, or Ever. you're unsure? You're unsure. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, with that. We'll cut back to the party um, here in the sort of around the campfire back. And um, I guess I will do this and say that, yeah, Antigonus, after some time, like after about 20 minutes total of them being away, um, sure enough, Yarling returns out of the forest. (laughs) 
back to the, <laughs> back to the campsite. Mm-hmm. Looking happy as ever as she comes out of the forest. She just sort of skips a bit, but then stumbles and then readies herself. Um, and being that the cloak and dagger is away now, should I role play Yaling or Yaling, do you want to role play this? <laughs> I'm up for it. All right, sure. Yaling, you know your objective. <laughs> All right. So. What has she been eating when she's been to the toilet? Mm. <laughs> uh, so, what am I? What am I rolling? Uh, you you're just trying to role play and isolate one of these guys away from the camp. Oh. Your your motivation as a doppelganger is to pick off people. No worries. Um. You may not th- have a perfect accent. <laughs> Antigonius. <laughs> Would you come here for me? Where's Pruitt? That's kind of what I need to show you. It's you have to see this. Of course, of course. Um perhaps I'd like to eat my goat first. I don't I'm not interested in any romantic rendezvous you might be having in the forest. And she's gonna kind of like tug at him like this is serious. Sure. What should we do with Cleo in the meantime? She's safe with her other this. Is I she? don't want her seeing this. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm interested in what's out there. I'm going to follow. TPK by Doppelganger. <laughs> oh, yeah. Doppelganger's be pretty mischievous. <clears throat> How it's like uh, I will let I will scary. let Yaling very lead the way, and I will ready my weapon, and I will also um, hold an action of a searing smite. Um, if I see something that seems like it's going to be dangerous, I'm going to searing smite my weapon and strike at it. Sure thing. Um, so, Yaling leading him into the forest. What happens next? Um. Antigonus, he's behind that tree. I I don't want to go over there. I think he needs you to talk to him. Something happened in that forest. He's not quite right. What did he say to you? I didn't really understand. I. He seems really shaken up about something, and I I tried to console him, but nothing made sense. Well, I don't want to surprise him myself. Go tell him that I'm coming. <laughs> so you have to go behind this tree. Mm. And can I do pro its voice? <laughs> you certainly can try. Do you want Probably, me? Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's do that. What do you want pro to say? Yeah. Um, well, we've had technically the same person. Just like uh, just, just yell as Prewit. Mm-hmm. Ah! <laughs> Do I believe that? <laughs> Is it coming well, from the wrong source? It depends. Roll me a. I'll say roll me a perception an insight check would do probably actually if we're trying to figure out. Uh, roll high, I guess. Sixteen plus six is twenty-two. It's pretty good. Sounds a bit like Pruitt. Yeah. Sounds like it could be like any any sort of French gnome. It sounds like, but not specifically Pruitt. <laughs> sounds like. Any French gnome. Yeah. <laughs> Any French gnome. <laughs> All right. Um, thinking it's a cry of, of pain. She'll I kind will... of run back, like scared. Like I, I told you, he's not okay. <laughs> uh, I'll try to dart past her and ready to slam whatever I see on the other side of the tree with a searing smite that I was holding. When he goes uh-huh. past me, I'll probably try and hit him. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, charging past, yelling. You swing around the sword. Um, it's almost certain that whatever that was making that sort of off offbeat sort of caricature of pro its own scream certainly wasn't pro it himself this is all added up to be something much more sinister going on so you swing around your sword but to your surprise as you do there is nothing on the other side of the tree and it just hits the tree itself sort of burying in the bark but in the last thing in the corner of your eye you see is yarling sort of readying something herself as she swings around and yarling she begins turning as you have your um, sword embedded in this tree, that the sort of hair that flows down on Yarling's head begins to pool around her and sort of sucked into her. And so she forms one shape and that shape begins changing again. And it changes into the I'll same- I'll try to use the tree for cover. 
So unfortunately, he will get a surprise attack on you because you didn't go for Yarling. So um, yeah, I'll just, I I'm will... trying to use the tree for as much cover as I can. Absolutely, sure thing. Um, he will make his multi-attack. <laughs> Panda, you are the worst. I yeah. cannot believe you. I, I assume... I'm so sorry. I just, I don't know what came over me. I mean, <laughs> jeez, are you trying um, to kill us? Does a 24 hit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's <laughs> give me some, uh, let's think I got disadvantage from the whole um, thing. <laughs> no, no, he gets to, he gets advantage from being, um, okay. okay. Attacking from some thing. So he does eight bludgeoning plus 3d6. But okay. his second attack, it doesn't hit because it's just come out of the thing. So he does uh, 21 damage to you. 21 That's bludgeoning. As the, um, it basically uses both its arms to sort of form one massive fist, which he pulls back over his head and then slams down on your back as it sees you've got your sword stuck in this tree. And um, mm-hmm. that's when, is it down you, 21 or? No, no, I'm up. Doesn't, all right. Well, that means we need to roll initiative then. And uh, the doppelganger rolled a 14 this time. Okay. Um, let's see. Say a quick prayer before you roll. <laughs> well, I already said I said the prayer when we were walking, so that was, yeah. I, I got that. Yeah. So there's that. Oops. Um, that is. Oh, my screen is now gone weird. Um, I can tell you what you got if you want. Okay, I got a two. Great. Yep. Yeah, I don't think a D four is going to help on that. Yeah, you got a two. So, all right, um, seeing that you just, yeah, say your sword is still stuck in this tree and you're just trying to wrench it free, mm-hmm. having felt this colossal hit that almost floored you in one blow, colliding with the solid of your back, but making you stagger, it follows up again and just winds the thing back as though it's like hammering on a gong. This thing just comes back mm-hmm. again and it's going to multi-attack once more and um, use the slam for a 21. Yep, that'll do it. Oh, you guys are going down. <laughs> <laughs> Hate bludgeoning. As Try you not are. to metagame, man. Try not yeah, to metagame. That's fine. Yeah, that's exactly what I would expect of you guys. I'm very proud of you for that. Non-lethal damage as you are flawed and um, everything goes black for you as you just feel it. One of the things hits you on the back and then the second one on the back of the head and you just fall to the ground, fl- flipping over at the last second and looking up at some shadow that's cast against the backdrop of the forest that does not belong to any living creature, anthropomorphic or not, that you've ever seen seems to flow and bubble with one arm suddenly bulging and then the other going over the thing carrying fluids around it and so it looks down at you pulls you close to you pulls you close to it and suddenly the last thing you see is it studying your face very closely well, with these darting eyes and before you black out you're looking at your own self antigonus and my my own self then sees me rise up with orcish resilience oh! <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Why did you do this to me, man? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 baby. Unbelievable. And... Unbelievable. <laughs> Don't make me just try to build stuff and then suddenly okay. <laughs> uh, well, no, it's this exactly what would happen. I know, I know. Fair enough. That is really cool. Turn into me. Uh-huh. And then I will use my action yeah. to cast a second level guiding bolt. Uh-huh. I will streak my mace across my shield and guiding bolt this guy. At my one HP, I've got left at second level. Sure thing, absolutely. Um, go ahead and cast your guiding bolt. Um, well done, absolutely. Take a point of inspiration as well. Thank you, thank you, very, thank you. Very cool. cool. <laughs> All right, so we got some damage to roll here. That to hit is uh, fourteen plus six twenty to hit. Uh, twenty definitely hits him. Okay. As you open your, uh, he's killed. He's like not killed, but he's knocked out so many creatures in his time that he knows when to start reading them, to start forming into them. And Antigonus, suddenly you see yourself in the same armor, but his eyes go wide with shock as you just pull yourself back up and get the guiding bolt off. That's Ooh, what I like to hear. <laughs> roll. Uh, Twenty-one damage from my oh. guy. All right. Sure, yeah. <laughs> he just lets go of you. Um, you are prone still because you were technically knocked out. I don't know. How, could you read the um, Walkish Resilience to me? I'm not sure if you actually do oh, get kind of knocked down. Um, he, he wouldn't actually get knocked out. I, I know enough, the ability. Right. Absolutely. Oh, wait, I, it's not, it's not, okay, my fault. I like fair the roleplay that way. But Yeah, that's, uh, that's absolutely fine. Is a good um, yeah, yeah, so I'm not out, yeah. but yeah. Did you say 21 points uh, of damage? 21 points of radiant damage, that's 21 correct. points of radiant damage, and sure enough, he begins to glow like a beacon. As this huge, like, but what does your guiding bolt look like? Uh, so I scrape the sparks from my mace on my shield, and these mm-hmm. little sparks fly the air, and then suddenly emerge together in green radiant energy and blast him back. 
All right, nice one, absolutely. And he lights up like a beacon in the forest. The only two things making light in this forest are the huge moon that casts in a white lantern over the landscape. But also, suddenly, out of nowhere, this green beacon is through the trees, instantly catching the sight of everyone around the campfire, glowing and casting shadows and obscure directions as this guy's lit up and all you see is the full horrid form of this thing black veins on black skin jet black like night sort of coursing across his skin leading into his eyes where the veins turn red and they dart around in panic as it's finally been discovered and finally been brought to heal by this huge thing sticking out of his stomach and sending a light across the forest but with that anyone who wants to see this i'll have everybody roll initiative who wants to who are i also cry out in that moment i scream aloud Mm -hmm. um Sabatua! <laughs> and seeing that happening, and after Antigonus told me to be ready, I would have immediately cast Shillelagh, like, just right away. Absolutely. Um, am I still unconscious on the floor somewhere? You have been taken behind a tree. I, <laughs> I've been taken, I've just been taken some, okay. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, you are still unconscious, unfortunately. Um, I'm in the vicinity, like, they might bump into me, is what I'm asking. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm going to put you around here, just the other way, and I'm going to put everyone else sort of where they would be effectively far away enough so that this would all happen. So down here, if that makes sense. The problem is uh, I, no one can see now because I'm not there. Oh, right, okay. Sorry. Well, yeah, we'll have to deal with that as it comes. But yeah, um, yeah. let's have everyone roll initiative. Like, he's already got his 14, and um, Antigonus has got his 2. <laughs> 20. Nice one, nice one. Five. The turn order. So I just need one from you, Kara. Five. A five, okay. All right, so I think that's everybody involved in this combat because two people got knocked out. So yeah, um, the other people around with no weapons all sort of panic and get behind you seeing you draw yours. But um, being that Antigonus turn just then, um, which would bring it round to you, Herodotus, seeing this light off in the distance. Um, he will pull Cleo close and whisper some words of magic and cast mage armor on himself. Very well. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and increase your AC accordingly as you get this sort of shimmering aura around you. And move Casting closer to Kara, dragging, obviously, Cleo with him. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put you here. Actually, delete that. Sorry if you can't see now. <laughs> but I can't have the token on the map there. Um, yeah, sure. So you move close to Clara, Dragon Cleo with you, 100%. Clara's down there. So move wherever <laughs> you like, closer to Clara. You can try your token or? Or me? Yeah. Uh, well, where would we be? Oh, yeah, so I'll take her over to the. Yep, sure, 100%. All right, is that in your turn? Yep. All right, although it has Guiding Bolt on it, that does not stop it from sort of trying to pat it out, but it also does the same thing it tried to do to um, Yarling, and that it just um, gets both of its arms down, begins letting them drop so they drag along the floor, but he can still whip them around. He can throw them back into the elastic back, and he sort of tries to get a huge punch on you there, Antigonus, with a multi-attack. Slam for 26, which is crit, oh my God. which uh-huh. is um, 11 points of bludgeoning damage. And that that takes him down for realsies. Yep. All right, you are down. Um, non-lethal damage, though. So you no okay. need to roll um, your death throws. He just knocks you out. Okay. All right, um, and for the rest of his turn, he will move his distance, which is to do 30 feet to... Um, Closer to this unfortunate woman who hasn't got away in time close enough, but he can't make it all the way. He makes it that way as you see him sort of dragging his hands along the ground behind him, leaving like trails as his feet and sort of dangly movements don't resemble any kind of human at all anymore. They just sort of lift up in a, in a cruel sort of um, a cruel sort of comedy, a satire of how humans move as his arms just wave around and his legs do the same as he gets closer and closer, his eyes now staring down at this woman, but that ends his turn. Um, Amy, it's your turn. Uh, Kara, what would you like to do? Um, okay, first I'll move kind of in front of Cleo. Mm-hmm. Just kind of keeping her behind me. And then I will take my staff and my other hand and just kind of bring them together like this as I bow my head. And 
a burst of energy will shoot forward and I'm going to cast Thunder Wave on him. All right, very interesting. That's a save for me. Is it con? Um, let me Where's it check. Deck? It is con save. All right, I got a 20. So I think I take half damage. Yes, failed save. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and roll that damage. Ooh, I rolled double eights, so All right, cool. good. We all take eight damage then. Very nice. All right, yeah. As as you fire this out, you just something very, uh, almost chilling as he looks to you, and a mouth forms where there was not one before, and he just lets out a scream, which sounds like Prewit. Basically, Prewit screams through his mouth, but then it forms again, and it turns into Yarling's mouth, and the Yarling now speaks, saying, I need you to come with me. But it's not her talk because it's still attached to this horrible form, which is obviously mimicking words that it's heard before. Is that in your turn? Um, yeah, I'll just like look at Herodotus, like kind of in a panic, and be like, "Do you have any idea what this is?" Do I? You have to find out on your turn. That's it. But okay, is that in your turn? All right, it's round two. Yeah. Antigonus's again. This is turn. Uh, but you are knocked out. But you no need to make death saving throws. Um, so that brings it straight round to Herodotus. As a free action, Herodotus, you can roll. Whatever role you think would be necessary to find out what this would be. <clears throat> a nature? You can try it. 11 total. Mm. A being that defies all description and historical record. This thing just does not correspond to anything you've come across in the past. Oh, I don't know, my dear. And then um, he'll pull out like a, something out of his pouch. Oh, this might work. And it like it looks like a little piece of spider web, and they'll just like blow it in the direction of the uh, thing, and it'll just like loads of these spindles of webs come out towards it. Okay, cool. For the web spell, Dex 40, 14. <laughs> Save like 14. He got a 14, which means he succeeds. Oh, he failed. A failed? No. Oh, right, I was going to say, <laughs> my, my, my interpretation, the rule's entirely wrong. But okay, yeah, um, so he succeeds. Does he take it's any a other it's a, it's a 20-foot cube. Okay. And it's classed as difficult terrain. All right, fair enough. Good to know. But he's not incapacitated or anything because he succeeded to save, right? He succeeded to save, yeah. yeah. Is it a strength it's save or a dex save? Each creature starts to turn in the webs. And there's a journal that must make a dexterity save. So dex if, he's, save. if he stays in there, he'll have to make another save. Yeah, sure, but he will be around to his turn next. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, he will stand in front of Cleo there. Very well, indeed. So that brings it round to his turn, and he will move out of the web, which is, well, is he still in the web where he is now? Well, it's a 20 foot, so if, if he doesn't yeah. end his thing in the web, it's fine. All right, well, he's going to attack this um, this poor woman who's sort of shielding herself in fear as this thing gets closer and closer to her, speaking in different voices and sort of changing its face at will now. Suddenly you see Yarling's face appear on it, but it's got this cruel, evil, sadistic grin that Yarling would never have. It's just too wide, and it re rears up, and it just clocks this woman down hard, like without any mercy, straight through her hands, so her hands only collide with her own face. Let's just see if he attacks, but I imagine he does on a um, thing, yeah, 25. Um, so, yeah, he does five bludgeoning damage, which is enough to knock a uh, commoner out. So she's knocked out. So, and then the thing will continue moving. Satisfied that it's sort of completely flawed this woman, it will leave her and its arms drag across her as it makes its way now over to the f next person he's, uh, it can see, which is you there, Kara. Um and it's going to rear again and sort of instead of using of its arms, it's going to sort of bend its back all the way. So the back of its head's pretty much almost touching the back of its ankles. And it's going to fall fully f like <laughs> swing back forward and try and headbutt you with another slam. Jesus! Um, a 20? Does a 20 hit? Absolutely. All right. You take six bludgeoning damage, but that ends its turn. That was the forehead of doom attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um... Kara, it's your turn. Okay. Let's see. He's right... Let me look at the map again. He's right up on me. Okay. Um, I am going to take my staff and actually, you know what? I'm just going to swing it at him. Okay. Cool thing. Yeah, cool. Definitely try that. 
It's still advantage because the guiding bolt, right? Uh, it lasts Pretty until the end know. of Antigonus's next turn, and it's the first attack that hits. No one actually, I think, tried to hit him with anything that had a damage roll in the first round until Antigonus, so I think it goes off then, right? Um, or is it just the next attack? It, I, think I think it's the, it's the next just, attack within a minute. It's just the within next attack within a minute, too. Oh, right, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Swing with yeah. advantage, then, absolutely. Okay. Ooh, not great. Oh, no, you're, no, it's target before the end of your next turn. Yep. Right, unfortunately, oh. without advantage. Well, uh, neither of them hit anyway. All right, so. that's fine. But yeah, in fact, it does hit. It just goes through, but it just sort of sinks into his body and it sort of forms around it, jelly-like. You even get it stuck in for a certain second and it just sort of lets out another smile. But this time, it's the small gnome face with the same telling moustache over the upper lip, which tell you it's pro its face, but it's certainly not him as it just lets out a sort of another scream, a scream of fear because it doesn't quite understand. <laughs> but yeah, um... No, so for as a bonus action, I am going to just kind of reach behind me and say um, like a brief quiet prayer to Sir Nunos, and I am going to cast my spirit totem behind me next to Cleo, and I'm going to use the bear spirit totem. All right, that's cool. So I think it's the first time so, it's ever used. What does, it, what does this totem yeah. look like? So um, it actually is like an um like just this sort of wispy smoke like thing starts to form mm -hmm. and then it forms into the spirit of a bear that just kind of like rears up and then sits there in oh, sort right, of okay. like a protective stance <laughs> and that yeah. spirit totem is going to give five temporary hit points um actually plus my druid level so eight temporary hit points to every one of my allies in very its well radius everyone except of course Herodotus, you can't have, have two points. You can't have ten, you can't have two sources of temporary no, no, points. No, but no. everyone else. Does that but does that affect a character who's can't bring like you back? This? Can't bring you back, unfortunately. Damn. Uh, okay. um, but yeah, okay, very well. But it'll help yourself. Cleo. So. It'll help Cleo. It'll help all the other people that are still yeah. up, except this woman. I'm just going to put this on in there, even though she's not dead. Um, but everyone else gets a good eight points, which could save them against this thing's knocking them out. And you yourself, of course, get it as well. Uh, right. Does that end your turn? Yes. All right. So Herodotus, it's your turn. What do you like to do? Um, so what's this Yarn T done? Has he done nothing? Yeah, uh, he's coward. Oh, wow, well, okay. Yeah, it's pretty much the extent of what he's done so far. <clears throat> okay, okay. Uh, well, he obviously ended his turn there, so he would go in the web again. All right, so, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to clarify where this 20 foot is. I, I don't moved... know how to draw on there, it's a 20 okay. foot thing, so okay. He moved quite some distance since you cast that. I think, I mean, he was. He was here when I cast it. Wasn't he? So you would, have, you would have cast it with this woman in it too. Well, I didn't know if she's an ally or not. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, it's pretty ruthless. I'll allow. No, I mean, no, no. I mean, what's twenty yeah. foot around this point here? Okay. Yeah, that would get her. But I mean, where he is now, I don't know if that would still get him in. I'll allow it for now, but yeah. we'll be a bit more clear on this in the future. Well, so DC fourteen, deck save. Um, let's have a look. Oh, you got a nine. So what happens to him exactly? Uh, he is stuck. Oh, where he is? Hang on. Uh, 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 um. So this is quite new for me. Web. Make a dexterity save. On a failed save, the creature is restrained as long as it remains in the webs or until it breaks free, which you've got to use a DC strength save for 14. At the end of its turn, or when does it do that? As an action? A creature restrained by the webs can use its action to make a strength check okay. against a spell DC. If it succeeds, it is no longer restrained. Very but well. It's, but it's All an right. action. Cool. Does that end your turn then? Or? No, no, no. That was just that. And I'm going to hit it with a electric jolt. Oh, right. Okay. We're getting a bit interesting now. Is uh, Weber is, is yeah. web a bonus action? You got have the, it's already it. cast. It's concentration. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 100%. Okay. And he will point his staff at it. <laughs> and it'll just like right. a jolt will come out. And, ooh, 17 on the dice. That's a definite going to be a hit, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, 17 definitely hits him. Well, Attack rolls plus, also have advantage. It's restrained. Uh, damage. Oh, seven, yeah. seven damage of electricity damage. Do you want to roll your dice again in case you get a crit? Or I can do. Uh, no. no okay. Not. What was it then? How much damage? Uh, seven damage. Yeah, sure. And as you do point your staff at it and let out this electric bolt, it affects him in a different way you've seen ever before, perhaps, in that different parts of its um, sort of malleable body begin to bulge and pop and certain things. It even grows a big pustule of the black flesh on its neck, which as you jolt more into, uh, sort of electricity into him, just 
like bursts into a pus pustulous tar that sprays across the ground and oh, even no. coats a bit. He's eating them, my friends. He's eating them all. Yeah. As it reforms, <laughs> as it reforms, the more perceptive of you will notice that it is about it's lacking about you know a good three four kilograms of its own mass so it's a, it's the exact same shape but just a bit smaller um yeah does that end your turn uh, we'll do yeah still in front All of right. chloe yeah i don't think anything's stopping me from attacking you uh, he's got to use an action to break free i believe hmm now i'm just gonna make sure because i need to look up exactly what this mm -hmm. Does so he, he, can, he can attack stuff adjacent attack, to him with right? their stand yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. there's so no problems in attacking oh, okay so he'll still attack um, uh, Kara straight away, um, still pulling things around. This point, he started to turn his torso in such a way that with such force that his arms begin to swing around and just begin to pummel, trying to bring you down like the rest. But he'll multi-attack um, for a 23 and a 13. So the 23 definitely hits the 13 misses. All right. So the 23 is 10 bludgeoning damage. Does it bring you down, or are you still okay? It's got eight temporary hit points. Oh, yeah, you got okay, loads of temporary yeah, hit points. Okay, yeah, because I had those temporary hit points. All right, very well. Yeah, this bear that's sort of pulsing out this uh, vigorous energy through your wall is um, definitely showing its worth, as um, you do feel its um, protective spirit around you fade as this sort of thing just collides with it. With the strength that it hits you and the damage that you felt doesn't quite correspond, and you can quite effectively assume that you've been protected by this bear spirit. Um, that will end its turn, as it cannot. It didn't use its um, action to try and break free. It's still standing there. So it is your turn now. What would you like to do there, Kara? Okay, let's see. I am going to take my staff, give it that shake again over my hand mm -hmm. as the water trickles down and all kind of coalesces into my hands, and then I'm just going to shoot forth an ice knife at second level. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, go ahead. So that is a dexterity save. It's a dexterity save for him. It's a dexterity then, save for you, I believe, too. And then too. I also have to make a ranged spell attack. Yeah, but keep in mind that Ice Knife's description. Uh, the target in each creature within five feet of it must exceed a dexterity Ooh, saving throw. Didn't or a think about that. Damage. So I'll need a dexterity saving throw from you and awesome. a dexterity saving throw from Herodotus as well, please. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> he well, I it. saved. So. All right, very good. You take half damage. He did not save, I don't think. What's your DC? Uh, it's only 13. Ah, he succeeds then. No, he has disadvantage he because he's restrained yeah. on deck ah, saves. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, he does not succeed. Fair enough. But go ahead and roll that attack for all as well for the um, the actual physical knife. Right. And Herodotus, I'll need a deck save from you as well. Yeah, that was my reaction. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> I'll assume you failed. <laughs> 21 to hit. All right, yeah, certainly hits him. So he takes, um, what is it? Um, he takes 1d10 piercing damage straight yeah. away. So I'll roll that first. So go ahead and roll that. Oh, that's only a two. Very well, two it is. Um, yeah, this thing just sort of, you throw it and it sinks into him. Just the jelly thing just absorbing it as though it doesn't matter at all to him. Um, and it just sort of smiles at you and it, as though this thing just doesn't bother him. It's too damage. Who cares? But go ahead and roll that explosive damage that he does not. Oh, <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm new at this. It's all right. It's all right. All right. That's it's eight a... on the dice. Eight, so. sure. That's my um, temporary hit points gone. Yeah, sure. There is just an explosion again, not only of ice, but of tar. As this thing just, it feels, you see it basically bubble up the same way like if you imagine an explosion under tar just like gives this thin layer of very elastic liquid and it just seems to be exploding inside it and it just looks down and grabs it but suddenly it just expands and it gives way and it just pops and ice and tar splurts everywhere as you can see through the hole you've made in his chest but it begins to reform but now he's looking around through its height he's just smaller and smaller but the more of his body that gets blown in every direction so he takes the four damage plus the two from the thing and you guys i think both uh, take no, yeah i took eight damage um eight damage do I make a concentration check if it's temporary hit points? You may take a concentration check, yeah, if you just get hit. So Yeah, even if it's temporary hit points, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, um, so I'll just roll, and then what is it? Concentration, uh, con saving throw. Con saving throw. Uh, 18? 18, yeah, absolutely. The web is still in place, and he is still restrained. Okay. Did he save on that ice knife, or did he fail that? He saved. Oh, okay. No, yeah. he failed. No, he failed, remember he you failed. rolled. Ah. 
Sorry. Sorry, keep reminding me of this stuff. You absolutely. Yeah, I thought he failed. He takes another, he takes another four damage. So Harry, um, he's dead. You, he's, you forgot. Not quite. Not quite yet. <laughs> you guys are Harry, getting that. <laughs> he looks up and he is, you know, you can tell from the size of him now, just doesn't look as, as intimidating. And he himself has stopped keeping up these acts trying to scare you. He stopped intimidating. He's stopped impersonating people and things. He's now just focused on perhaps pulling on the web. We'll soon see. And does that end your turn, Amy? Uh, Kara? Uh, yes, that does. All right. Herodotus, it's your turn. What would you like to do? He uh, fumbles in his pouches. Oh, dear. Uh-huh. He pulls out some little rose, rose petals. And it just blows him in this direction and casts sleep at level two. And that is 77, 78. All right. Fire damage. No, <laughs> if, yeah. I, if I leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hit points, so that's 8, 11, 18, 19, 20. That is five dice, 20. Oh, uh, 28 hit points. So hit points exceeds his current hit points. So yeah, nice. Um, so that's to make it make. Uh, no, it, no, no safe. safe. He's no down. safe. No safe. He's down. Sleep, yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you sort of <laughs> blow these pedals in his face. Originally, just doesn't quite get the effect of it. He turns around to swing around back at Kara again, but as he sort of raises his arm up, it just he, just some plop happens and some sort of very telling thud. And it turns out that he swung his arm so far backwards that he's actually swung it off his body. And he just looks back and his arm is like wiggling in the ground. Oh he... no, that's Pruitt's <laughs> arm! And then he just sort of <laughs> looks back up to himself and he sees that his form is just beginning to um, disembody. It's beginning to sort of melt itself into the ground and it just suddenly falls back. And this thing sleeping is a very strange sight. It just seems to lose shape and turn into like a bit of a puddle, but it looks like a melted person. Um, cushioned by grass. So, yeah, I don't even know if he's immune to it or anything. But... Um, I can't see any reason why not. He's immune to something, but it's not that. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, absolutely. That ends the combat. And you are um, surrounded by a bunch of very damaged people and also um, this puddle of goo, which possibly could be something. But who knows? There we go. So, as um, everyone's sort of recovering from this panic, Cleo will peek her eyes from behind you, Herodotus, sort of gripping your robes like a curtain from which she can peek behind and says, Well, what? 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 Uh, what? Is that a monster? I mean, what? It's, it's, it's dead? <laughs> no, it's sleeping. Oh, well, you should probably kill it. I, I can get a big rock if you want. I'm good at finding rocks. I look to Kara. Ah, uh, I don't, I don't know if a rock is going to do it. Wh- where is everyone else? How long does this sleep last? I don't know. Um, uh, one minute. <laughs> oh, it's not going to be long, dear. <laughs> we might want to kill it quick. Oh, um, all right. Um, well, I will anything? call down a yes. thunderbolt. It, yeah, do that. I don't. I try, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, my most pow- my most powerful spell is is, is a can trip. <laughs> you you auto crit against incapacitated targets. Oh, is it? Oh, no, that's yeah, helpful. I'll try and jolt it. So that's two two d ten. Yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll the automatic crit on that one. Absolutely, no problem. I'm gonna wake him up it's, again. Um, no, this is an interesting one. Let's hope you actually do kill him with this. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't, you might want to hit it as well. Oh, uh, all right. Oh, I rolled, I rolled double eight, 16. All right, sure. Um, so, same as before, when you sort of point your electric staff at this creature, which is now sort of still melting into the grass and making sort of a sudden tar-like dirt around it. You get in this big clump of what you can assume to be its core, and it just begins to pop and sizzle and sort of send out huge spurts in every direction until it just dissipates and falls into the grass, so sudden into the grass, so damping the ground that it's no different than just black rain that seems to have fallen on the ground around it. But it is indeed just completely spread out across a large area, and none of the bits that are like the arm before moving it just wiggles to a stop and um yeah that is dead well done 100 percent. you killed it <laughs> <laughs> i think it's gone 
Well, well, well done, Herodotus. Well done. Um, well, I'm a powerful wizard. You are indeed. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. How are you feeling? I I'm not. Oh, I'm, I'm a back. bit cold. <laughs> you feel healthy, though. Oh, I'm perfectly fine. Look at this guy. He's not got a scratch on him. <laughs> let's go find the others, shall we? Yeah, let's let's stick together. Um, mm -hmm. Leo, you stick close to us. I'll hold her you, hand. Yeah, I'll, I'll stay close. Don't worry. And uh, she'll take both small hands wrapping around yours, Herodotus, and she just walks alongside you. I'll look to the others. And, and then, the Herodotus, auntie. in your other hand, with your uh, hand on it, <laughs> with your hand on the staff, uh, the snake man tries to take that hand as well. So like, yes, I, I need some help as well. This is very scary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll stop the concentration on the web and make that dissipate. Sure, yeah. All oh, what about the woman? Is she okay? She's fine. Don't worry about her. She's not fine. She's, <laughs> she's got like a bleeding from the face. <laughs> like, like a oh, I'm not quite sure she is. We, it's need okay. to, we need to find the others How, quickly. We should probably leave this place before more come. Uh, well, well, no, no we've got to find our friends. <laughs> oh, Unless sorry. they've been eaten. Just like in a million pieces, she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore her, she is fine. <laughs> we must make haste to Athens before more arrives. Uh, Palamedes, go and find the others. <laughs> All right, roll me a perception check with Palamedes as he sort of scouts the overall walking area. Roll me with advantage because oh, um, he's an owl in his sort of natural Ooh, habitat. Trying to spot 17 and an 18 on a die. So is it his perception or His mine? perception, yeah. I don't owl. know what his is, so... Um, can someone pull me up an owl sheet? It's got to be quite high though. Owl. My highest was an 18 on the dice. Generally, they are very high. Let me well, my dice have been good three. tonight. Uh, it's a plus three for him, so an 18. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, 21. Same, same as mine then, 21 then, yeah. Yep, sure. Um, yeah, he'll spot both Antigonus and um, Yowling very close by. Uh, Yowling seems to have been propped up uh, with her back against the tree and covered with a single branch, but he can spot it very easily, being in his natural habitat of a forest. You can see the sort of skin color of, of Yowling's sort of hidden very easily, which he'd initially take being like a mouse or some sort of prey, but he can definitely notice that that is a person. Um, and he'll relate the information to you. Like, I, uh -huh. I, I see the snake one. Oh, is she alive? I don't know. She's not, not moving. Okay, and, um, she's dead. With regards to Antigonus, you can see Antigonus from where you are. Oh, it's like, it's been like, yeah, I, I, tri I trip over him. I'm just ignoring him. <laughs> My spatial perception is so <laughs> okay. I'm gonna rush up to Antigonus and uh, I'll place both hands down on his chest and my tattoos on my arms again, the green will light up. Mm -hmm. and kind of shoot out of my fingertips, shooting almost like roots out of my fingertips and mm -hmm. surrounding his chest and flowers will begin to bloom. And I'm going to cast Cure Wounds and I'm going to cast that at second level for yeah. him. Ooh. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll those dice. Very nice. Oh, I rolled double eights. Double eights. Very Ooh. nice. Yeah. Taking so, a feeling the life returns to you. So that'll heart. be night. 19 yes. hit points. Ooh, 19. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. <gasps> this creature no longer. It is instead the visage of Kara leading over to you. And you can smell the blossoms of these um these flowers that have grown around you. It fills you with this um intense new life. And you do have in turn is it how many hit points? 18 did you get? Uh 19. 19. Very cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so welcome mm -hmm. back. Did you get it? Yes. It looked like yes. it looked like Yaling. It looked like Pruitt. I have no idea what it was, but it's gone now. Um, but yeah. I don't know where Yaling or Pruitt are. We've got to find them. Uh, I yes, of course. I'll, I'll um, I will smash some clay in my hands and rub and give myself a little more cure wounds. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, Go ahead and roll that. <laughs> I heal um, six more. Six more, See, absolutely. Seeing him do that, Kara's going to go, oh, yeah, I probably should have done that and heal herself as well. <laughs> Fair enough. <Absolutely. laughs> Keeping oh, track of everyone's uh, spell slots themselves, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, yeah. will pick himself up off the floor after tripping over and, yeah. and just brush off the, uh, the leaves. And... 
Yeah, he brushed off leads, but several of you are coated in this very sticky sort of tar-like substance that sort of um, pervades your skin and sort of settles into the skin, but doesn't quite stay. It, it hurts to pull off with how sort of, um, you know, clinging it is to you. But um, this man here is going to medicine check this woman, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Down it for that one. Okay, you got a 10, which I'm going to say is enough to stabilize it. It's middle of the road. Um, yeah, so she's stabilized. She basically just gets pulled to the side and um, fanned by him a little. He doesn't know what, quite what he's doing, but um, she and she does sort of woozily regain consciousness after some time. Um, the rest of the, the snake man's just returning and walking around, sort of panicking now. But yeah, Polly, what would you like to do? And um, Philomedes is a currently hovering over where he's seen uh, yelling. Yeah, don't mind me. I'm just... just, just <laughs> oh, no, she's dead. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, I'm just, I'll just sit here with <laughs> yes. this nice branch. I, I echo his sentiment of <laughs> moving on. Uh, he, will, he will move as quick as he can. To, uh... Yeah, yeah. Right. we'll head for yelling. Take some extra clay and smear it over yelling's face where mm -hmm. I see the wound and get uh, cure wounds as well. Very nice. Okay. Uh, are you still letting the snake man hold your hand, Herodotus, into the forest? Well, I couldn't. I'm holding the girl's hand. They all yeah, shake him. He... Oh, no, come on, man up, boy. <laughs> all right, fair uh, enough. Because yeah. he's got he's um, a walking stick. You get eight points of healing, yelling. Simba. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And you're, yeah, you're covered in some clay, but which eventually turns into your own skin after a second. How much different would this have gone if Orcus and George didn't exist? <laughs> Woo! Is it called Orcus Endurance? What's it called again? Savage Endurance? Relentless Endurance? Relentless I think. Endurance. Yeah, that saved the day, man. I mean, like, because I could have kept doing that all day with the bringing yeah, people. Yeah, it like, it's a good, it's a really good, like, yeah, you got us good. That's a, a hell of a thing to do. It's a hard guy. But yeah, okay, so everybody's basically brought back with a notable exception of one party member that wandered off mm -hmm. first with the trap. And, of course, the woman as well who accompanied them. Um, whether or not the person going out originally was the orc or the woman, you're unsure. Which was I'm the, so, you know, the whole thing. I'm so glad you guys found me. Pruitt hits me. Oh. I, um, I'm not sure it was Pruitt. It looks like it's, I don't know, we're fighting it's something that can impersonate us. Before I hit it, it looked exactly like myself. It's a, it's a gobble dagger. Uh, Do you know that? What? Did you not hear what I said? A double. <laughs> I heard what you said, but I still want to confirm. I said, I said a, a gobble danger. I know, but you got that from. You yeah. know, like the, I, I'm joking. I'm joking. The, okay, fair enough. I mean, I'm happy to do so. You just need to make the relevant roles. No, so. no, no, I'm joking. Palamides, uh -huh. uh, go look for that small man. A uh, Pruitt. Last we knew, he was going out to hunt. There were three of them. I don't. I don't know where any of them are. Uh, I'll start looking for tracks, looking for any kind of um, indication of where they may have went. I'm assuming it's dark, so I'll use a light cantrip on uh, my mace and try to use that as a as a bit of a yeah. flashlight. Or just will light up his staff as well. Absolutely. And as you pass through the forest, uh, in certain directions, you're not sure where they are, but you sort of find the. Um, the remnants of several campsites that have been along this sort of clearing, this collection of clearings um, over some time. And all of them seem to be spent out. Like most of them seem to have been scattered over the course, over the winds, course of years. Some seem to be as fresh as they were here, like a few days ago and things. But um, go ahead and roll me survival check. If, as you make your way to the forest, make it with advantage if Herodotus is helping um, you. I'll help or, him, yeah. <clears throat> At any oh, point, does Pro get another save against this hypnotism? No, he's Unfortunately, dead. not for it. It's um, it's lasts some time. This thing lasts about. Survival is there. a twenty-one. Twenty-one, yeah, absolutely. That's very good. Um, you don't quite find the tracks of Ferret or where he went, um, but you do find the signs of the tumble that occurred between him and the um, whoever was the doppelganger originally. Um, How about in the blood? forest, do I see any goat blood? Uh, yeah, you'll find goat blood. That's a good point. Perhaps. Good. Well, yeah, well said. You see where the goat was dragged for some time, but being that it was moved around quite a lot and the doppelganger itself dropped it often, difficult to place exactly to where the goat was killed. Um, you do find um, sort of a vista where you see several footprints have gone around and you see somewhere branching off from the vista um, 
more footprints in one direction, which is where you find this sort of flattening of grass in certain areas around and displaced twigs and branches that are snaps very easily. You can see the very fresh snap, like the pearlescent sort of very dry new wood that other new, newly freshly broken branch is obvious from one that's been broken for some time. And from that, you can tell something occurred here. And from that, you can see a trail of, um, of blood going off in one direction. Is everybody with the party here or is um, did someone stayed at the camp or? No, we'd all be there. I think we've all stayed together. <clears throat> okay. Did Cleo come with us? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yarling would be sticking with uh, Cleo. He's probably sticking with Herodotus. Okay, sure thing. And the trail and Tiganus will continue to lead the way um, stealthily. Sure thing. Slinking along behind you will be the snake man and um, the the other man's probably stayed at the camp with the woman, but the snake man knows who's strong in this party and wants to stay with you guys. But you, he will never talk. He'll always be like 30 feet behind, poking from behind trees. Um, but yeah, not too long at all before um, you come across another vista. So it's sort of like you come across to a cliff edge, but only a cliff of about 10 feet high. And when you're at this cliff edge, you see down at Strange, it's as though the cliff itself is emanating a light onto the forest ground. But it's not long before you discern that you're probably standing up above a cave entrance, on top of a cave, pretty much. Um, noticing the cave, I'll motion to everyone else. I'll put a finger up to my lips to tell them to be quiet. I'll douse the light, and I'll try to just sort of feel my way along the edge of the cave to see if I can find an entrance. Sure thing. Um, fast in the light. Yeah, I mean, it's easy enough. You know where exactly where it was. And there was a soft light emanating from the cave itself. So following that, very simple to find the entrance to this cave, which seems to bend down in a very narrow passage. But you can sense from the dirt with your 21 survival roll check earlier that it's recently been displaced. And the fact alone that there's light coming from here makes it a bit obvious. So, I'll, uh, knowing, Seeing that the way is clear, I'll, I'll make a motion for everyone to follow me. Sure thing. Um, yeah. Is anyone, everyone doing that? I mean, is yeah. anyone doing that? Cool, 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 cool. So it's very slowly making your way down this narrow, narrow cave passage, which indeed sometimes you have to squeeze to unusual patterns to get through. Um, you might not, sometimes you have to crawl, but um, judging from the physiology, physiology of this thing earlier, it would have no problem itself doing this, but you guys manage it with some difficulty, but you do make your way down and you follow these sort of very softly lit braziers until the cave opens up into a large, large um, sort of clearing uh, of rocks and boulders. And here you'll see collections of strange things. Um, most notably, you'll see two large statues occupying the very center of the chamber, looking down on several um, cages that are placed before it as so as though that anyone in those cages would have had nowhere else to look. But being that you're not, you're not looking on the visages of the faces yet, you don't need to make that save, but do not matter because you know what will happen if you do. Let me put you on this map, huh? Ooh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the most interesting thing there is definitely the cages. So I will slink up to the cages trying to be stealthy. Very well. Um, yeah, uh, roll me a stealth roll, actually. That's a good point. Put some uh, mm -hmm. music on for this. Um, like music let's time. see. 11 plus stealth, probably not very good, uh, plus one, 12 for stealth. Sure, a 12 stealth, yeah, you easily make your way down to the cages, all of which seem as though they're not occupied, but seem like they have a lot of use. Um, they're kept quite clean, and um, you can see that the dust hasn't settled on the bottom of the cages. It tells you over that recently been in plenty of use, but obviously two of them are occupied, one by which you immediately tell to be Prowet, and the other one of the same woman that you saw earlier on the day. Uh, seeing it's Pruitt, I will take my mace and try to break the cage with... Is it made of wood? What's it made of? Um, it's made of metal, but Pruitt, what you see when this happens is you're still looking at this visage that's currently constantly changing uh, in light of what you're seeing. It's different faces and things. Um, but you see that when it blocks the visage, the outline of, um, of Antigonus himself having blocked this sort of hypnotizing connection between your eyes and the statue the trance immediately breaks and you can just, the black figure of, in front of you just fades into vision and you can begin to tell that it is Antigonus in front of you. What is my name? Fancy, fancy seeing you here, Pruitt. Tell me something that we experienced together a long time ago. Roman Invictus. 
get me out of here. And so, uh, I, I try to strike at the cage. I'm imagining it doesn't go very well. So I'll say, mm. um, you're the one with the nifty fingers. Do you have the thieves tools or something? Maybe there's a lock we can pick here. I'll start looking for some lock or something. Show me. I will take out the dagger that's always hidden in my boot, which we established in session uh -huh. one. <laughs> <laughs> and I will try and use it to pry open the lock. <laughs> sure thing. Is this a thieves tools check or is this actually like... No, a, I mean, I don't have thieves tools. This is with a, very a well. knife. Maybe sight of hand roll disadvantage. Yeah. Um, 12. Or no. Yeah, yeah, 12, 12. 12, yeah, you basically uh, damaged a lock, at least. It's kept on like a very simple tumbler system. Remember, this is ancient Greece, so locks are at the very, very beginning of their existence in the universe. And it's not as though it's a padlock or anything. It is just a simple hole through which you imagine some sort of thing is constructed. But messing around with a knife enough in it like that, it's probably enough to open it, I'd say. Like, it's not very simply, it's not very complex. There are complex out there, locks out there. This is not one of them. Um, it's not long before it does jingle free and um, the cage can open. Hmm. Uh, none of you look at that statue, by the way, and I'll point in the direction, but not look at it. <laughs> this is the point where, like, don't look over there, but it's that person you know, and everyone, everyone just goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they do, it's fine. I'll just Texture. shake them out. <laughs> everyone looks. It's a technical TPK. <laughs> no <one's going> to <laughs> say Last time uh, Pruitt told Yelling to look somewhere, she got bitch slapped, so she's not going to look regardless. <laughs> Oh, um, but I will I will hold out my arm and sort of uh, offer to help Pruitt out of the cage a bit more. I'll take it. And I don't know, Pruitt's a little deflated. He's going to go right to uh, l looting the cave and finding his stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll start to work on seeing that he basically just hacked this lock. I'll try to hack the lock of the other person in the cage there. Yeah, sure. You're more than capable of breaking. It's very simple. It's basically a lock to keep people who haven't got much equipment to themselves in but with you with a mace on the outside, easy enough to do. And as soon as you stand in between her and these statues, she just blinks up and looks at you and says, what happened? I was hunting and I I think I fainted. I, my head, oh my gosh. And she just, you can see a big sort of matted hair where this sort of big sort of patch of scabby blood is beginning to form. Seems like these woods were as dangerous as you guys wondered. Let's get mm. some rest. Your just would be spending some time casting Detect Magic. Sure thing. And there is a huge, huge collection of uh, magic that is centered around these two statues, um, mainly focused on the actual carvings of the faces. But that being that you're standing behind them, you can't see these faces. Um, but there is a huge amount of magic coming from them of the um, enchantment school of magic. Okay. Do I find my gear? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, it's basically piled high with lots of different other gears that have been um, like scooped to one side of this um, cave over the course of you're not sure how long, but um, you know you see several bones, several collections of skulls. So you're not sure how long, but you know there's a lot of gear here, and you do find your own most recently added to the pile. Yeah, just keep looking, loot the cave. Sure thing, absolutely. Very guys. methodical. <laughs> uh huh. Um. Yeah, absolutely. You can spend time here. You can take a 20 if you want for uh, spending as much time here as you want to. It's not difficult. Um, oh. just roll me a investigation check anyway for something. Roll it or take 20? Uh, roll it, uh, but I'm going to let you take 20. Roll it for something else. Sure. Yeah, would probably... uh, 18 investigation. 18 investigation. Very cool. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Garland, go ahead. I'll get back to you. Uh, just in a sec. I was just going to say Yarling would probably want to loot the place while they were there, so should I hop in on investigating uh, yeah sure absolutely um go ahead and you know i'm gonna say say you guys pouring through the amount of things that you find it it's not difficult to um sort of find things that might be worth something and you're detecting magic included as things start getting peeled away in things like more things of magic start to uh ping up on your detect magic um sort of radar for lack of a better word and yeah going through you'll find um What's this? 350 drachmi that's been piled over the course of who knows how long. Who's writing that down? Oh, yeah, somebody uh, wants I to am. I, I was keeping track of it <laughs> earlier, so mm -hmm. I'll just keep You'll, doing it. Uh, well, how much drachmi? 350. Okay. 
Uh, you'll find what seems to be some white gems, but you're unsure what exactly they are. Unless you How want many? to try and roll. Um, you find seven of them. Seven white All gems, collected. and what would I roll? Um, I'll say just a flat intelligence roll. Okay. Unfortunately, there is no no roll in D&D. I wish there was. Today is just not my day. No. It's an eight. <laughs> right. An eight's enough to know that they look very nice. You know, and they may be worth something. But yeah, going through, you'll also find um, a pair of boots, which instantly ping up on your radar there. Um, Predators. Oh, they're magical. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, right in there. <laughs> um, hearing uh, Pruitt tell us not to look at the statues, I will take my shield and prop it up and see if I can look at their reflection. I wanted to investigate uh, the statue with the magic. Um, I wanted to study it, what it was. Very well. I do like um, Antigonus's approach. I, you don't have really have a mirror shield. I don't know if a shield's going to be so good as to look at that in the way that I'm thinking. You can get a basic outline of them, like a very basic. You can okay. tell one's a woman and one's a man. Or well, actually, maybe okay. not even that, because basically both are quite androgynous, and the um, the very subtle differences yeah. in the visages uh, make them a man and a woman. They seem, so they, they, do they seem to move the way that you described it to Pruitt before, or are they stationary? I seem stationary in your shield. Okay. Um, just quick question. How long is this taking? Is there enough, is this enough time for Kara to just kind of sit down and take a short rest? Uh, I'd let the party decide how long you've wow. been around the cave. I don't know how long they're digging. So, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we'll dig around for half an hour and rest for half an hour to make sure. a short rest. Yeah, I think that, sounds yeah. Good. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. So yeah, okay. Kara, in answer to your question, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, the brazier slip warmly in this cave. You'll find them, um, these several bits and pieces of good loot that are here, along with some um, finely crafted robe as well, after going through some things like... How, how many finely crafted robes? Just the one. <laughs> just one. Yeah. Um, I think this will also start to see whether or not there are other exits here. He'll start to look around the borders of the cave. Yeah. There's no other entrance beside the one they came in. Doesn't seem like it. There's a passage that seems to have been some sort of cave in recently, but not recently, sometime in the past, but beyond that, there is no other way this, this cave goes okay. other than the way you came in okay um so studying the um statues um yes. how are you going about doing this exactly um, i want to investigate it you know i've got me uh, things out just to my little paintbrushes i'm just like wanting to check it over and yeah, any, any markings on it any runes on it you know that sort of stuff uh yeah okay if um, i end up looking at it and i have to make a roll i'll make a roll it's not an issue if you willingly do that you're welcome to do it yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. So going around, there is no runes carved on these things or any sort of signifying details which tell you what they may be. But going around and um, looking up at it, um, unless no one stops you, just go ahead and roll me wisdom saving for Oh, oh fuck. That's an eight. An eight, yeah. Okay. Herodotus just goes around and you can oh, see it happening play by you see it happening play by paper. This old man is going around and against people's prior warnings. He just eventually looks up and um, <laughs> it's difficult to tell because it's Herodotus, but he may be in a trance. But it might just be Herodotus being Herodotus. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just hard to tell. But he just just look up and immediately I'll say um, his, his grip on his staff goes lax and there's a big clatter as it hits the cave floor, which tells you quite significantly that, yeah, he's under a trance. Uh, Pruitt will grab whatever basic cloth that is not valuable and just toss it over the statue it's that easy yeah absolutely and um but it's just now no, no longer you see like what you saw was as soon as you laid vision on these two things both faces just seemed to turn to you without the heads moving but once they did they start fading into other things large smiles you'll even see for a split second visages of antigonus yarling and pruitt have been added to these several shifting faces that come over these statues He'll just pick his staff up and then carry on investigating. <laughs> um, well, yeah, just move on, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but okay, um, with that though, with the um, with the thing that's been thrown over their head, you get a good idea now that they're wearing some kind of um, both wearing some sort of very simple armor. You can't see what their faces look like, of course, but um, one's holding a lantern and the other one's holding a spear. Do I have I got any religion check on this or? Yeah, you can do a religion check if you wish. To. If anyone wishes oh, to do try a religion check with it, so, just go ahead. So close to a natural twenty. Fourteen total. <coughs> Fourteen total. Um, these are quite obscure. Natural twenty. Things. Oh right. Okay. Wait, Yay. Wait, 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 wait. 
fair enough. I'll cut it off at two rolls because I think that's fair enough, right? I can't, you know, but yeah, it's the oh. or 20. That's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, these like, you're not immediately sure of who they're supposed to be, but the very fact alone of the thing that seems to have been dragging you here, you can clue with this to be um, statues of two spirits. Spirits, not quite gods. Uh, two powerful spirits. And you know these to be um, Dolos and a party, which I'll type in the chat. Okay. Dolos and a party, you know to be um, generally spirits that are associated with um, mischief, trickery, deception, that type of thing. Greek spirits? Greek spirits, yeah. With the 20, I'll, uh, I'll that, um, relay that information to everyone. Mm -hmm. Oh, how enchanting. Do they, do they have any connection to uh, Prometheus, Harry? In terms of trickery? Oh, this is my Greek knowledge being tested, but I think <laughs> that they do. I think that they do. Um, okay. You should certainly maybe know who a party is. Um, okay. Oh, God, should you? I think you should. Um, we can figure it out after the session. I'm just, when I hear the name, I'm curious. Yeah. I think you might know who one of these people are, but um, okay. let me just double check because I want, if it's happening, I really want you to do it because that's exactly what your characters should be using is that type of like idea. But um, okay, yeah. Somewhere in Prometheus's past, um, when he was creating, you know, all of the things that he created, his apprentice was called Dolos. And he's one of many of uh, Prometheus's apprentices. Okay. So Does that's he know you know. to do anything in particular? Um, uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. Basically, okay. He's in, okay. he, he was in charge of the workshop that um, Prometheus, you know, kind of ran. Got it. That that's would make some sense. sense. Most I can give you in the short term, but, you know, get to me between sessions and I'll riff off a bit more yeah. of what yeah, Dolos means to Prometheus. But yeah, you would have okay. heard of him. He's quite a significant part of Prometheus's past, so... Yeah, got it. Something. Eventually, Herodotus would go sit down with Caro and take a rest using some arcane recovery. Sure thing. Yeah, for the benefits of this, say everyone has a short rest while this is all going on because you're not in any so significant, strenuous combat or anything like that. So everyone's got the benefits of a short rest. Um, but yeah, Cleo's there with you, Yarling, at this point, still peeking ahead from around um, you know, the edge of your skirt, but. Every time she sees something she doesn't like, a skull, for example, or some bones, she'll just immediately bury her face back into your skirt. Leo, it's okay. They can't hurt you. Mm. I, I've heard that they can come to life. Not on their own. Mm. Mm. I don't like this place really much. Can we go? I, uh... I think everyone has finished with their rest, so I don't uh, see with it. Prewitt Pre will pitch in. He's, uh, yes, we only met one man who could raise such things from the dead, and uh, he was in Eritrea. I'm sure he didn't follow us. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? Uh, there were catapults with bodies. Pre Prewitt but... Pre Pre uh, is talking nonsense. He's a man from war, and he knows that he wouldn't tell these sort of things to children. And she'll, just, she'll, look, she'll look to you, pray for confirmation of this. Uh, plenty of time to find out about the bodies when you are older. Uh huh. Uh huh. Can we go? <laughs> and she'll just start uh, to pull you will, back towards yeah. the exit. Yeah, I think this will agree with everyone else and uh, sort of pressure <laughs> everyone out. But at the, after everyone presumably is starting to exit the cave. Mm -hmm. um, the last he'll take a last gander at the statue of Dolus. Okay. And um just sort of make a a passive prayer, a connection to Prometheus to kind of let him know I don't know what you're putting in my path here, but uh I'm paying attention. If there's something mm. for me to see, i I'd be glad to see it. And after that he walks out with everybody else. Very well. When uh yelling leave go he'll go over to prove it. And just be like, when she can't sleep tonight, you're going to be the one braiding her hair. I'm not sure that it's a punishment. <laughs> I do not know how to braid hair. Mm. Hush, rushes Cleo out of the <laughs> <laughs> <Very well. laughs> 
Sure. So you guys um, leaving the cave easily way find your way back to the camp. And um, right now, with all the events of the night, it's still going to be like quite late night, like around 2, 3 a.m. So like, what would you guys like to do for the remainder of the night, given all this stuff that's gone on? You still see scatters of this sort of very sticky tar-like liquid um, around sort of the campsite. I will pull uh, Korskis, no, no, not Korskis, uh, the, the Yuan-Ti leader guy to the side mm -hmm. and ask him, what did you know of Korskis, this half-orc that you were with? He seems to be the culprit of what's going on. Ah, uh, Korskis, yes. I don't know him very well, but I, I have a very good, how you say, read on people. I have judged people very well. And this Korskis fellow, I would trust him with my life. Where is he anyway? Right. He seems to be gone. In fact, if I were to make a guess, I would think that he was the one that betrayed everyone else. But, uh... Haha, <laughs> friend, you do not know your people as well as I do. Trust me on this one. Koskas is the most trustable person of our party. Yes, well, that basically confirms my belief that he may have been the one behind this. Um, from now on, friend, if you see a half-orc... Simply ask him whether he worships Prometheus. That should give you an idea of whether or not you should you can trust him. Uh, what answer should I expect? You should expect him to say yes, and if he doesn't, well, perhaps he has uh, been brainwashed by something else. If not, I would ah. attack him on sight. If there is ever a half-orc in my future, and I suspect him being brainwashed, I will ask him if he worships Prometheus. Wise advice. I expect to use it soon. Very good. Mm -hmm. Enough for me. And he'll go back to warming Watch himself by the fire. By the way, don't think that his, uh, that extra hundred drachmi is going off from nowhere. You'll owe that to the rest of the party, too. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, we, shall all, um, we shall all chip in and make up for the troubles you went through. This could have happened to all of us. You were here to defend us. I understand this. You hired us for a job and we did it. Get some rest. Yes, yes, I will get some rest now. And he'll go and, um, he's a bit of a weirdo, right? So uh, he'll go and like, when you, <laughs> wait, while, while you're all going into sort of like, I don't know, like rest on the soft grass, he's just gonna crawl inside like a hollow log, like feet, <laughs> feet first until his head's just poking out. And he'll then he'll just- he'll Like just, a sleeping bag? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll sit there for a good long while with his eyes open and he'll sleep with his eyes open because he's like more snake than man this guy so he got a thin oh, film that covers his eyes and um that's the signification that he's asleep <laughs> um i'll take first watch i feel all right after that short rest i will take the I second could, we could do three watches here we can get out in eight hours oh i best get some sleep then Right, right. <laughs> right. Akara, do you mind taking the third watch? Not at all. Um, but before I go to bed, I want to investigate the doppelganger goo. Sure thing. I mean, how would you like to investigate it? What would you like to I just want to see if I can discern anything about it, like its origins or anything. Doppelganger goo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a bit of retconning going on here, but I'm going to say as you're doing this, um, a wagon rolls along the uh, roads to the south of you. And sure enough, Aquilus will be there having dropped behind the party for a good amount of time. Because you know what? Oh, yeah. I completely forgot that Aquilus has the car. <laughs> but you know what? His car, he was quite a way behind you to begin with. Okay, here's what I'm doing. He's quite a way behind you to begin with. And one of his cartwheels fell off. And you were out of voice <laughs> distance for him to shout you down. And he, I guess you just kept on going. And he's fixed it, he's fixed it and caught up with you now. There you go. It's done. Whoever's going to complain about plot hole, it's no plot hole. It's just plot hole patch. It's just experimental yeah. storytelling. Like right? In the first season of the X Files, where every time Mulder sees something like crazy, a uh, Scully is like locked behind a door, so she can't yeah. see. It. It's exactly. Yeah. Like... <laughs> so Who are you, and what have you done with Aquilus? Yeah. yeah. So he'll just finally catch up and put his cart down. And um, the donkey won't be there. It seems like he's been dragging it along himself for the past, which is another reason why he's been so long. And he'll just say, oh, I tried to shout for you all, but you mustn't have heard me. The, the donkey ran off with those fixing the cart. I'm about to drag it bloody all this way. Oh, I'm sorry. Horse can be like that. Oh, damn. 
Um, <laughs> we thought you had split already. Uh, uh, my, uh, apologies. Not yet, no. <sighs> well, come and rest. But what's happened here is, what's all this on you? What's, what's going on? Uh, uh, nothing more than a fairy tale. Very Have nice. a rest. Rogers will uh, be snoring at this point. Yeah, he's just going to open and collapse down on one of the logs. And uh, he'll just <laughs> fall straight to sleep. Yeah. Like, you're not sure if he sleeps or he may have just passed out. Yeah. 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 All right, I'll take first watch. <laughs> Prue has okay, got second. Um, and what did you want me to roll to investigate the game? Right, right. um, it's up to you. I mean, it depends how what exactly you want to learn about it. You can do a nature, you can do a history or arcana or anything you like. Okay. Uh, thinking Kara would go with nature, and I rolled a nat 20. Nat 20, yeah. It is a creature of the natural world, although extremely rare. Um, maybe from where you're from, you may have heard of the tale of this, um, difficult, difficult to tell, but um, in your tongue they may be called something like a, um, a skinwalker or something, you know. Uh, maybe not a doppelganger, but strange old fairy tales of not going too far into the forest old fairy tales that say that if you're in a forest somewhere on a path and you see a friend of yours an old acquaintance coming in the opposite direction that you should never say anything to them you should just turn and walk the other way no matter how much they call to you the likelihood that that's your acquaintance friend is low and you should run just old tales that you'd heard of the forest of these you know or maybe an old druid shared of you this idea before but you may have heard something like this from long distance in the past yeah Okay. The word that you can describe, you're unsure. Okay. Yeah. Very well. So after that, I'll just go sit down and kind of like meditate. Sure. Well, the the watches needn't be rolled any perception because the night passes quite pleasantly at this point. Um, Pru would like to do something during sure, his. Sure. Go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, he so Pru's gonna wake up yelling. Okay. Oh right. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you said wake up yelling. <laughs> no. Like, oh, like, wow. <laughs> you have a nightmare? All right, okay, you're right. I understand. I was like, that's interesting. So, what, you're going to wake up nice being oppressed. <laughs> nice peaceful night, you say, and let me just wake up yelling. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to wake up mm-hmm. yelling. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, through it. I'm sorry to wake you up. Uh, come and sit uh, next to me. <clears throat> She'll give him like these eyes of like. Oh God! Mm. <laughs> it's happening again. Are you no. serious? <laughs> well, and he doesn't know that that happened. I mean, he oh, knows about what the thing was. <laughs> I um don't want to be offensive, but I'm not quite sure I would trust you at the moment, considering what happened. Oh yes, you uh you described yes the uh, monster transformed to look like me. No, you do not have to stay close. I just wanted to have a conversation. Uh, it was good to have a uh, a battle to forget the recent past, no? Yeah. Uh, these things tend to uh, block out the other stuff. I was recently given some advice to let things go. But I have realized today that violence is not the exception. It is a rule, and I will not rest until justice is had. It is good that we are going to Athens. You and I will be able to find out there who killed your sister, and we will kill him. That is why I woke you up. Thank you. Go back to sleep. She'll um just kind of kind of pat his shoulder a little bit. Um and I give him like a like a as friendly as yelling can make a nod. <laughs> um and then kind of um goes to lay down and just kinda of look over like a roll initiative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Whack>! <laughs> Get some sleep. <laughs> um, I should just look over a soldier and just be like, you should sleep too. It's been a long day. 
I will sleep once my watch is over. Thank you for the concern. You look over at Kara. We have traveled a long way. <laughs> <laughs> Kara's not aware at this point. She's like in her trance state, so <laughs> totally oblivious. Oh, that's great. We've the got best. that this session. We've also got through it again. You, you seem like a druid, right? <laughs> <laughs> you are you a druid. Me and Harry were pissing ourselves. <laughs> no, no. Me and Harry were pissing ourselves. It was such a serious <laughs> moment and we all lost it. We were like, <laughs> please say yes, please say yes. <laughs> yeah. For those watching, him again? I think that was a discussion we had off camera, but in the second session, I asked Kara like three times if she was a druid, and she never answered me. So sure you asked that's the inside session joke. Well. There. Every session, yeah. Every session yeah, I think all you of our faithful before. viewers are keeping track of these running bits. We don't have to... <laughs> Episode 82. <laughs> I've got you are a druid. I've got about you, Kara. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think you're <laughs> some kind of druid. <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but I've traveled a really long way. <laughs> We're getting off topic, but yeah, sure. The night from this point on goes peacefully, yeah. and you'll see. Even though it's quite late in the day, uh, late, in, late in the night at this point, around three a.m., and it's not long before the um, the sun begins to rise over the trees, replacing the moon and filling it with a sort of much more like um, more uh, like uh, verdant touch to the whole atmosphere around you. As you can smell the morning dew, and you can hear like the birds being to chirp as they wake up first before you. Um, but yeah, the day is yours. But we'll call that the session there for now. Aww. Because um, we'll continue this next <laughs> week. But the party will continue along this road. Because I think it's a good <laughs> call it. The party's probably in a lot of... Uh, very tired after that whole like, ordeal <laughs> with a very strange... That was moment. great. What a, good, uh, what a fun night. <laughs> that was a good one, guys. <laughs>